Block 1 Zephyr Road in Audiobook Presence. Audiobook Title Resume of a Reincarnated Girl CH 01 48 by Karasawa Kazuki. Note This channel is for fan of a web novel or light novels reader. Also, that we could support the also we could support the author, artist, translator, editor, and publisher so that they can provide us more of these awesome stories, so let's help them. Join my Discord, link below. Also visit my other YouTube channel share, like and subscribe. Farm Village Arc 1. Poverty after reincarnation. It seems I've died. It also seems I've reincarnated. I was quite surprised. It was all of a sudden, on the usual road home from school, crossing over the lights at green, I received a great shock that sent me flying. No way. People fly that easily. I didn't know is what I thought at that time. Without the expectation of flying, I just fell down on the ground. Collapsed. I checked my legs which were bending in impossible ways and was startled, unexpectedly. I was immediately thrown to the ground. I checked my feet and saw them twisted in unimaginable ways. A person that came up to me noisily shouted shit. Someone got run over. The person that ran over cried this is bad. A person was hit. Looks like I've been struck by a car. I see. That's how it was. Once I understood the situation, I slowly closed my eyes. I was very sleepy. That was the last moment of me, the 17-year female high school student. 17. And now, I'm sucking on an average-looking woman's boobs. Though I'm sucking amazingly hard, the milk just doesn't want to come out. If I suck like this, my face is bound to look like a turtle's. But before that, this woman's nipples will become so long that they'll set some Guinness World Record. Sorry, but I'm hungry. Still, even if I continue to suck any more today, milk probably won't come out. I gave up on it and curled up to conserve energy. This woman is probably my mother in this world. I was taken by the car, died and then apparently reincarnated. This woman is my mama after reincarnating. By looking at my mother, I can tell she's not very well off. Her skin is dehydrated, eyes are lifeless, and cheeks are sunken in. Milk isn't coming out because it seems her nutrition isn't enough for that. The inability to produce milk, spells malnutrition for me. That's the last straw. With not even a year, I put on a distanced look. Zero. The previous world's me was, to be frank, well off. Born a single daughter of a big hospital's director. A beauty taking after her mother and not only her face, exercises as well and most of all excellent grades. Fufu, it's embarrassing to say that about yourself? Not at all. I'm just stating the truth after all. Oh oh ho ho. I was too high spec, treated like the unattainable goal and didn't date a single boy but I also had few friends. I it's not like I have a bad personality at all, okay? Well, maybe. At any rate. Where the hell is this? As far as further and mother's faces and lifestyles are concerned, this isn't my previous life's Japan. The skin color is a white similar to Japanese skin color, but both mother and father are blonde. Their faces look a bit like they're sculpted, but not to a too strong degree. Like a Japanese with a chiseled face who dyed his hair blonde, that kind of feeling. Looking at our house's structure, it's different from Japanese. The roof is even made of straw. We're living in a house made of wood, earth and straw. They're also wearing sandals similar to Japanese ones. The shoes may be similar to Japanese ones, but the clothes are western style. Their t-shirt like clothes are loose at the shirt tails. By the way, I'm only wearing a cloth on my bottom. Come on, show some more consideration. Just because I'm a baby, pants only, I'm a girl, is what I thought closed my eyes and started pondering, the world is wide, the world is really wide, but, was there such a country, the past life's me was really smart, I could remember anything I had seen, that's why I thought that looking at my surroundings would lead me to this place's characteristics, but, first of all the language, since it would reveal the specific region, but I failed, they use some words similar to Japanese so I thought that it was just that, but sometimes there are words I've absolutely never heard before. There is also the way they pronounce the words that's similar to English and most importantly the grammar is different from Japanese. 
It's been a month since I've been born. By listening in on my family's conversations, I've already grasped the language's main structure. Moreover, it's a language I've really never heard before. To the global me, that even mastered Arabian, this came as quite a shock. In the first place, Japanese is already quite a peculiar language in the world. A language that closely resembles Japanese like this. I've never heard of that. Maybe I'm in a really far future Japan. Japanese evolved further into the language it's now. Oh well, I'll eventually understand it someday. Once I learn to speak, I'll just ask where is this? And who am I? And it'll be fine. And then, I stopped thinking for a moment and decided to nap to swindle my hunger. Farm village arc 2, my name. Wait, that's Dange. Mom, that one was pretty close. Please worry a bit more about me. Right now I'm being carried on my mum's back. And while having me on her back, she's simultaneously working the field. Every time she swings her hoe, it's almost like her stick is about to hit me. How scary. Hi mum, I don't think you need to lift up your hose that much. Doesn't that tire you out? Every time the mother lifts her hoe, the baby's eyes suddenly open and get nervous. That's me. Some way or another it'll be four months since I've been born. There are some things I understand, but there are still plenty of things I don't. First of all the things I've understood, it seems we're living in a small farming village, but it also seems like we don't have good harvests here, everyone has become thin. This village's name is Garagari Village.1. Who was it that picked this name? Of course the name should reveal something about the character of our village, but that's way too blatant. Go and pick a name that is a bit of a better feeling. The second thing I've come to understand is my own name. My name is Ryu. My family calls me Ryu Chan. At first I thought that it's a fine name for a girl, with a cool feeling, but after hearing my other siblings' names I shuddered. Starting with the eldest, let's introduce my siblings. The eldest Hajai am 2, 13 years old. The second boy, Jiru 3, 12 years old. The third boy, Sabri 4, 10 years old. The fourth boy. Mara 5, 6 years old. The 5th boy, Sha 6, 3 years old. Everyone, have you noticed? They're the eldest of easy to understand and simple names, but the 4th name is Maru. Going with the previous flow, the name should be Shiro! Exclamation mark 7 is what I want to say, but Maru. And the next is Sha and I'm Ryu. I was really taken aback when I noticed it. In other words, the naming sense of my parents spins the following story. At the beginning it was Hajime, Jiru, Subaru, just like you would count. However, with the birth of the fourth the story changed to let's stop with having kids and they named him Maru, as in full stop, the punctuation mark, and with the birth of another one it became this time, please no more kids, and Sha had his name bestowed upon. Nevertheless another child was born, that's why I'm named you, as in Shari U.8. When I noticed this, I was shocked. Cool, I like it, is what I first thought about my name. I wish I had never noticed. Damn it, sometimes I hate my own greatness. Oh well, it's no use thinking like this. That's my name. The meaning of the it is one thing, but since it sounds pretty well let's just forget about the meaning. Yay. Even so my parents keep me at their side, with the excuse to keep me from crying, and go at it every night. H hey, I'm right beside you, you know. My eldest brother is watching very excitedly and through the slit at the door as well. It's pointless to say you'll stop in the names of your children, if you don't actually stop. Be a bit more mindful. Just what kind of name is the next child going to get? <laughs> if a brother or sister does come out, I'll give them a name. With a bit of fame for having an irresponsible naming sense, my parents have an irresponsible lifestyle too. First of all, I don't think they fit the farmer type at all. Their way of growing crops is quite sloppy. That's why growing crops isn't going well in Garigari village and my young self can't do anything about it. How frustrating. Even though I understand the language, without drained muscles I still can't properly pronounce anything. When I tried to talk it only sounded like obuabu. I'm such a burden. Even though my older three brothers are already helping out in the fields. Seems like in this village children enter the workforce around their 10th birthday. So my three oldest brothers are all helping out with fieldwork already, to keep them from becoming a hindrance, 
All other kids that aren't ten yet play together outside, but a baby like me, that can't play with the others, is bound to her mother's back. You 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 un, I need to start moving, as soon as possible. Hurry, move, my body, wake up, is what I shout in my heart, but it's no use, as to why I'm in such a hurry. This family is just truly poor. I do want to help my brothers and parents, but it's ultimately for my own sake. I don't really want to think too much about it, but reducing the mouths to feed, basically getting rid of children that don't pull their own weight, like me, by killing them or selling them. I'm a bit worried about that. It might just be my imagination, but sometimes my mother's look towards me is scary. Seriously, and older than me. It's all boys. My parents don't give a the oh, first time we have a daughter vibe at all either. It's probably because, well, it's most likely that kind of thing. That's why I have to appeal my usefulness. Otherwise things might get ugly. Let's start with learning how to walk and talk before my first birthday. So don't be rash mother. I'm a girl who shits gold. One. This name translates to something along skin and bones village, as in they're severely underweight. I'll be sticking to Garagari though, since there will be a few more name related jokes incoming. Garagari sounds a lot more welcoming than skin and bones village too. This isn't about necromancers after all. 2. This means start or beginning. 3. Written second and son. 4. 5. 6. Means end. Final. 7. 8. Farm Village Arc 3, My First River Debut. TN, another chapter, the longest one so far. Several parts where you shouldn't forget that Garagari and Skin and Bones mean the same thing. In the middle of being impatient I've finally become 8 months old. Using words, even walking have been a success. Congratulations, me. But when walking, I can't let my guard down since my head is still too heavy. Balance is important, balance is. I'm also still lisping a bit, however my teeth have already grown, so I'm able to properly speak with others. Since passing my first birthday I've been waiting for an opportunity to go outside and called out to the back of my brother that was heading outside. Sh, I want to go outside with my big brother, a blonde-headed child from Garagari village. My brother Sh is now four years old. He's not working yet, but rather plays with the other children and picks up firewood or draws water occasionally. I want to join that group. A. You can't do it yet. You'll be tired super fast. While picking his nose, he makes a face like he really doesn't want to do it. This brat, with a show you commie, treat me a little bit more nicely. Oh well, what Sha said is the truth so I can't really say anything back. Sure I can walk, but I've got no endurance. I've just been born after all, it's alright, isn't it? Even if you get tired, I'll just carry you on my back, Mew, won't you go outside with me? That's when a warm voice descends from heaven, W what an angel, this angel like child glittering as if he had a halo is Mario, 7 years old, even though you're just skin and bones, you're amazing. After overhearing Shell and my conversation. Throwing me a lifeboat and the making my eyes sparkle I nodded my head. Then mum, today, you is coming with us too. We're off. Whilst mother was already working the field, she called out to her and the sibling trio of the end triumphantly departed, joining with the other kids of the village. We arrived at the riverside. We're about fifteen people. The youngest me and the next one would be the snot-nosed kid, she. In general the kids were between seven and nine years old. Before me. The youngest was Sha. Usually they play around the outskirts of this river. By the way, right after leaving home my stamina hit its limits and Mario is already carrying me. Tahapero. Sha is picking his nose making an I told you so face, while I pretend not to know. He he, coming this far. It's my win! Exclamation mark. After discovering me, the new member, the village children approached me with a very curious impression. How old are you? Can you talk? Wow, my brother can't do it at all, etc, etc and so forth, saying their impressions they touched my little, adorable hands. Foo fa foo, small and adorable huh, I'm missing the usual roundness of a baby, but, I'm also a member of Garagari village, actually, everyone is just skin and bones, maybe you can only join Garagari village if you're Garagari? We're so close to the river, 
why not catch some fish? Picking wild herbs could also be possible, since we're close to a mountain. Let's all take in some more nutrition. Hey everyone, what do you do here? Catch some fish? I threw my innocent question at them. However the surrounding kids stare blankly for a second but then break into a huge laughter. No way. The river has deep places and is dangerous. Fish are fast and even if you catch them, they're slippery so you can't catch them. You says some interesting things. Why are they laughing at me so much? You're not supposed to catch them with your hands. Nets. Fishing lines. You're supposed to use tools. Aren't there? Some kind tools. No way. There are only tools for fields. Saying that, the girls before me all went right? In sync. G R R R. That right? Was cute. But shouldn't you just make some simple tools? Doesn't the village mayor have some tools for catching fish? I don't know who the village mayor is though. It doesn't have to catch many. M maybe try making something simple? I tried asking timidly. I mean, they laugh at me each time I ask a question. Just a baby that doesn't understand anything, that kind of look, exclamation mark. I'm just saying it, but mentally I'm actually older than you. I might look like a child, but I've got the brains of an adult. Amazing, huh? And just as thought, the village children break into laughter after hearing my question. Looks like it'll be skipping school, or rather skipping river. Ha ha ha. Great. Making tools. Great. You wants to become a magician. Amazing. Magician ha. Huh? They're totally making fun of me. I don't want to particularly become one anyway. And I never said anything like that. I'm not stupid. I I'll become timid at this rate. Seeing my slightly displeased face and being unable to just stand by. Maru patted my head. Thank you Maru. Thank you. Sniff. This kindness brings me to tears. It's only been a year since Ryu has been born. Don't bully her too much. And listen. Yesterday I asked the village mayor and he said it seems that a magician will come by soon. Were the shocking and brief words of the nice Maru. HMPF. What kind of magician? Is even my brother going to poke fun at me? Even though he patted my head? Just toying with me? Fine, I'll scram. Ignoring my even more sulky face, the tension of the other kids suddenly rose. Really? Awesome. Well, last time they were here was about two years ago, so it's slowly that time again. The village kids were swelling with excitement. A, hey, what's the meaning of this? What's this? A, hey, bullying? Seeing my baby brows wrinkled. My brother Maru explained it to me. Apparently, this world has the job of magicians, that try to be useful to everyone livelihood. It seems that until now when magicians came, they built a water tank, made slow crops grow up and even watered the fields during draft. Amazing people who solved the troubles of our village. Those are magicians, hired by the country. Settling the problems is even free of charge. In case of personal requests of villagers, they also take care of those if provided with payments. Oh, seriously. They exist? Magicians. Awesome. Awesome. Magicians. Is what you thought I'd say? I won't be deceived. Their magicians are probably just people with advanced technology. Don't you agree? I guess it's like that. That magicians would exist. Really everyone you're such children. And you just laughed at me? Aren't you the childish ones? Isn't that right? Pew pew pew. Magicians. <laughs> But this is a chance. I can finally figure out where this place actually is. I asked further about the name of this country before and his answer was Kasar. What's that? I've never heard that before. Or rather, it doesn't exist. As such, I didn't figure out anything. But people with advanced technology probably know a lot about the world. I should just ask them. Ask about the things I don't understand. And that, soon. Ah, won't you hurry? magicians. Pew pew dot won't you come? Ah. But before that let's make some tools for catching fish, as well as baskets to fill with mountain herbs. I hate being hungry. Farm village arc 4. Anti-hunger plan. Tn. Geez. It took me forever to translate this one. The link and the footnote are two different things. Please keep that in mind. I still haven't solved these things in an elegant way. Colon backslash. Enjoy. The next day Maru asked me if I wanted to go to the riverside again, but I politely refused. I it's not like I'm being bullied at all, alright? It's because I still have things to do, but eight-year-old girls are kinda scary. Sniff, 
I'm just a precious young girl. After that, I sent my two elder brothers off and entered the storehouse, right next to us, saying excuse me and opening the door. Jerry was threshing the previously harvested rice with a rock. He's really threshing the rice with a rock, leaving a near of rice on a large rock and holding another big one in his hand. He's shaving the rice off. The first time I saw this spectacle was when mother was carrying me on her back. I was shocked. What's this? The Stone Age, is what I thought. I kinda guessed by looking that there aren't any electronic goods, like no telephone poles, but I did assume they would have a thousand seed thresher. That's why the previous harvest still isn't threshed. Just what is with this village, as if they threw away all their civilized convenience. Just when I thought that, I looked left and right in the village and thought how was that made? For example, a water tank. Everyone calls it stone for water, a one meter square, carved into the stone that catches rain water for domestic use. Particularly surprising was, that it wasn't made of concrete but basalt like hard stone and seemed gouged out. Which reminds me of what the girls said, that it was someone calling themselves magician that made this tank. This time, let's ask the so-called magician, Pew Pew Pew. Casually asking about things things they don't understand is a child's right after all. But before the magician comes, I've still got things to do. Calling out to the diligently threshing Jeru I said, Can I have some straw? Oh, and can I be here too? Upon which Jeru looked at me with a bewildered face and nodded deeply. Jeru doesn't really talk much. Even though we live together, I haven't really heard his voice that often. He's the silent kind of boy. He's got blonde hair, but otherwise looks simple. I've gotten permission. So I grabbed some threshed straw bundles and just sat down where I could. The goal is making a tool to catch fish, if I'm not mistaken. Making something with small holes that open and setting it up in the river would allow fish to come in. Then making it so that they can't get out again should be a trap for small fish. Making something like that should be easy. Even though I can imagine the complete thing, I've never made anything with straw. So first I'll make a pair of straw sandals. I've made cloth sandals in elementary school once after all. That time it was cloth, but doing the same with straw should work. Once I've gotten used to knitting straw, I'll make fish traps, chaotically pursuing trial and error, then losing strength because of an empty belly. It took about 10 days to make one trap for small fish, one small basket for carrying mountain herbs and a straw hat. It wasn't a huge trouble, but as a one-year-old child I've used up my strength countless times and slept like a log. Actually I mainly slept. After all, sleeping brings up a child well. So sleeping totally my job. And with that, I asked Maru to take me to the riverside again. With the new straw sandals and straw hat. Since it's a rice straw hat, it's hard compared to a wheat straw hat and it's irritatingly pickling. I might have failed. Concerning the fish basket. Everyone in my family asked what it was. That's what the reaction was, but as for the sandals and the basket they were greatly shocked and father even asked me to make a few for him. Whenever those are needed, they buy from from peddling merchants. They've got straw right at their feet. What a waste. Usually they use straw to reinforce the houses, since they're made of straw, laying it on top like mats and it seems the rest is just burned. If the Mortani ghost one comes out, it's not my problem. So when we, the sibling trio of the end arrived at the riverside, most other village children were there as well. Looking at my sandals and hat they were chattering about them. My sandals got in our that's nice kind of jealous reaction, but my hat didn't. Well, I got to admit it's pretty uncool. This thing, it doesn't do anything, other than being irritating. It's kinda shaped like Kasajisu's hat. Too. Still, to keep my skin white. A tan is taboo. A woman that doesn't choose her ways for beauty, that's me, you, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. After enjoying the opinion meeting on my sandals and hat, I set up the traps in the river. The traps are of course my night shift less traps for small fish. I put some stones into them and sunk them into the river. When I come again tomorrow, they will be full with small fish. Probably, listen Mayu, I want to go to the mountains. After reaching the first stage of catching fish, I called out to my kind brother. Sha is playing something like tag with the other kids. Mountains? Why do you want to go to the mountains? 
I want to catch some things to eat at the mountains, put them into the new baskets. I tried looking with the best upturned and encouraging eyes. Well I probably don't have to. My kind brother Maru will probably come with me anyway. That's what I thought. However, what? I was refused. The mountains are dangerous. Kids can't go there alone. There are monsters there after all. That's the point my brother made. What? Monsters? Is some more fantasy mixed in there? Like with the magicians. It's probably just wild dogs or a bear, right? Saying something like monsters. Pura puri. This is supposed to sound angry. Well, either way a place with bears or wild dogs might be dangerous for children to go alone. Just a little to the surroundings of the mountain. I've kind of want to say that. But let's give up. Besides, there should be edible wild grasses around this riverside as well. I'll just be patient for now. Then, will you come and pick some eatable grasses around the river? Sure. But are there are any wild grasses like that? Can you tell that? Before, when I made the sandals, Jiru taught me. Yeah, when a one-year-old child suddenly tells you that's edible and that isn't, it's scary right? That's way too suspicious. I messed up. Just like that I used the name of that silent boy. Please forgive me Jiru. Like that, Maru, saying something like did Jiru know lots about grasses, caved into my request and we went to harvest some wild grasses. I love my kind brother. There were quite a few edible wild grasses at the riverside, dandelions, watercress. Japanese mugwort, fleabane, and jersey cudweed. Picking based on the information of a picture book I've read in my previous life, outside of watercress and Japanese mugwort, I haven't eaten any of these. I knew you could eat dandelions, but I didn't think I'd actually ever eat them. But the current me was different. If it can fill my belly, then I'll eat anything. That's the condition I was in. Just a while after we started picking, the small bag was already full, so we took an afternoon nap and went home together. In our retreat, mother made porridge with just a little bit of dry rice and I had mother put in bit of the grasses. I've already escaped from the milk life. I mean, there's just no milk coming out. So it's baby food right now. Or rather, everyone in the family is on baby food dear right now. At the beginning mother made an is it edible? It's safe right question mark kind of expression. But when I vaguely said that the other villagers are eating it too, she obediently put the grasses in the pot. That day's dinner, the porridge with with the soup stock of wild grasses, had a taste of nourishment that spread to all corners of the body. I was relieved as my other family members all ate with a satisfied expression. Finally, we'll eat fish tomorrow. Probably. 1. Developed in 1982. The Motenai ghost was a mascot to prevent people from throwing away food they didn't like. It was published with that advertisement. It's still referenced here and there, too. Reference to a myth with relation to the figure. Farm Village Arc 5. It was a new village. Tien took me a while again, but here is another chapter. I'm going to try to increase my pace to two chapters a week at least before university starts again. So look forward to that. Ho 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 ho. This much is good. Lots of them, though they're small. My fish trap was a great success. They're about as big as an adult's thumb, but there is ten of them in the basket. Seeing the insides of the basket, Sho and Mayu were rooted on the spot. The village children saw that from afar and gathered around me, saying they wanted to catch fish by themselves as well. After telling them to bring all the straw from home they can carry tomorrow and that we'll make it here together, they finally calmed down. The children were making a commotion saying how awesome and great I am, while I was grinning broadly. Gahahi. Yes, yes. It's no trouble. Masses, praise me more. I was in a great mood, so I taught the children which wild grasses were edible, after which they were making another commotion about how awesome and great I am. Yes, yes. It's no problem. T. After going home and showing my mother and further the cord fish, they were delighted. Mother, father. You can praise me even more, you know? I'm your precious daughter, aren't I? Aren't I? You fufu. Fu. That day's dinner had both fish and wild grasses in it. Fish bones are scary, 
so I didn't eat any, but the fish soup stock did its job so it was really delicious. The best thing I've eaten in my life so far, though I've only been living for about a year. After that, I made more traps for small fish, sandals and baskets together with the other village children while teaching them. As these days continued, while kindly and thoroughly explaining the ways to knit straw to the village children, one of them said this, couldn't it be that Ryu is a magician? Dot, everyone in the surroundings immediately become noisy, that's right, that could totally be, was everyone's reaction, is that right? I might just be one, I've got all kinds of knowledge and technologies after all. It's from my previous life, in this pioneer-like village I might just become one, you fu fu. If magicians equals people with advanced technology, then it's no exaggeration to call me one. Chichen pua pua exclamation mark one. But my dad said that if your mom or dad weren't magicians, then you couldn't become a magician, so only nobles can. He, so it's like that. HMPF, there are nobles in this country, which also means that there is royalty and a prince. I kinda want to take a look at that prince. Still, if magicians are nobles then in this country magic, I mean, advanced technology, pupupu, and knowledge are something monopolized by the strong and influential. I mean, there is no school in this village. They can talk, but they can't read or do maths. Even worse, this is a farm village but they don't know how to cultivate crops or everyday wisdom. They don't know anything. They're adults limited to being children. That's the really mysterious part. How have the people of this village lived until now? Perhaps this village open for development. Wanting this land to be newly cultivated. They gathered a bunch of people who don't know anything about cultivation is the only thing I can think of. The people living in this village are all basically young couples with children, the so-called nuclear families, grandpas or grandmas. Those elderly figures full with wisdom are missing. Since when does this village stand? After the discussion of nobles and magicians calm down one degree, Thinking it's finally my time I boldly ask the question that has been burning on my mind for a long time, then again it's just been a year, since about five years ago, before that, we were carrying stones to a magician building a castle. The one who answered was the oldest here, Ra, he'll be ten years old soon, so there are plans for him to start working the field soon. Oh, it's like that. Then the adults of this village were building a castle. That's amazing. Since I was coming closer to the true identity of this farming community, I excitedly answered. It was work related to civil engineering. The magician is the amazing one. Mom and dad just carried stones, but with magic, a magician can make anything. Seriously? Magicians are pretty impressive. Or rather, this country monopolizes technology and knowledge way too much. What a an impressive cover-up of technology. Why would you go that far in covering it up? Are you corrupt? And on top of that not afraid of rebellions? After which the older older boys started to voice their complaints. Anyway, when they were helping to build the castle, we weren't this hungry. Field work sure is difficult. If the Lord would cultivate the land, plant seeds and give water we could harvest crops, is what I heard, but further also said that it's different from what was promised. Apparently when still helping to build the castle, food and so on were still properly provided, but the castle was finished and they lost their jobs. To find the people who lost their work a workplace, they were offered to live as farmers and reclaim lands. That time they were given a minimum amount of tools and seeds and told that they just had to sow the seeds. For a few years the country supplied them with food and so on but about two years ago those provisions stopped. Paying a part of their crops as tax, the rest will be theirs to keep since they wouldn't need any more food. That kind of thing. I thought the villagers were an irresponsible bunch, including my parents. But if it's the country that was irresponsible then I can kinda understand it. But this time when the magician comes, the village mayor wants to discuss the crop failure with him. Then he'll do something with magic and on top of that we'll eat fish and wild grasses from now on. We'll be able to as much as we want, is what Maya suddenly said with a lot of passion. Everyone is nodding in agreement with his words. That's right, the first priority should be on eating your fill. Let's stop being Garagari village and become Pokari 2 village. 1. This is supposed to be a magical incantation like pain. Pain go away. 2. 
This means plump poor chubby farming village arc 6 minus 3 years old and learning about the world. Chapter 6 was translated by Ligax TN. Got an issue with the chapter? Feel free to take it and publish it yourself after fixing it yourself. I am in no way taking this up as a project. This chapter from this series is merely a one-time thing that was done on a whim. Only a promotion to bring new people to pick this up. Reopened commenting. After two years, the roundabout fraud like Magician Sama is here. Finally, Magician Sama has visited our Gary Gary village. Too slow. There were rumors of them supposedly arriving soon. That began around two years ago. It is a conversation from the village's adults. It seems that because of some type of civil war they had been severely delayed. But isn't two years too long of a wait? I am already three years old. Three piece desu. In these past two years of mine, an emphasis was placed on the Pochari village project to revitalize the Gary Gary village. First of all, small fry weren't the only fish. It seems big fish can be caught as well. By applying the same principle used to trap young fish, wood was inserted into the middle of the river to make a fence. The fish trapping enclosure is made from a web of straw which improves upon the original fish trap. There were noticeable results. It was able to reach the point to where dishes of big fish could be served at the dining table. In addition, a simple thousand tooth threshing machine was manufactured from thick wood, since strength was needed for the task. I primarily gave out gave out instructions, so it has the feeling that Mary Wangchen and Jiro Wangchen were the ones that basically made it. Thanks to this pseudo thousand tooth threshing machine, Threshing work was done with remarkable ease. As it was lent to the denizens of the Gary Gary village, threshing work in the village is completed with great speed. Because of that there is more time to spare, not only for the children, but even adults were able to begin knitting straw sandals or baskets. Any surplus that have been made is sold to the traveling merchant San. Finally, at last, this rural life seems to be over with. And now for the unveiling of the first place great discovery, a leguminous plant that was found by the riverside, with a vine-like plant, once it grows into maturity a bean that is slightly smaller than an average soybean. When I tried to eat it after planting it for a long time, it had a very immature taste when compared to a soybean, leguminous plants are filling and are high in nutritional value, with a bit of perseverance, soy milk. Miso and soy sauce won't just be a dream. It is the plant of dreams. However, there is one thing, the harvest of the field has had no progress. Rather it has worsened from growth. There are no paddy fields in this village. The fields grow a type of dry land rice for cultivation. It is harder than the rice eaten in the previous life. Well, it is still rice. I can't hate it. This dry land rice, it had very great and significant growth in the beginning. But it was a fact that each year the growth was less and less. I dimly, or should I say that I am completely confident, that I already understand the cause. It is a term that is derived from social studies class. Continuous cultivation disorder. This is it. This might be its perfect name don't you agree? There is no winter in this region. Does it become slightly chilly? To an extent, field work practically never stops and as soon as there is a harvest, seeds are sown again. With such a combination it is natural for the soil's balance to deteriorate. However, I don't have a particular countermeasure for this repeated cultivation disorder. After all, everyone in the village just says something along the line with the traveling magician Sama will do something about it. I am getting more and more interested in this magician Sama that has this overall trust. Fortunately, thanks to the fish and wild grasses, the hunger problem seems to be okay. Now I decided to see about the state of the fields. What the heck will you do uncertain magician Sama? Foo fa foo. Interesting. Will you be prepared with fertilizer? Will the soil be dug up from a deep place? Or perhaps, with flood control? They may make a rice paddy. This is interesting. Hurry up and arrive. Magician. With more than a passing though. Today is finally the day. Magician Sama is finally going to arrive in the village. How impolite to keep a lady waiting. And thus, with the arrival of the magician Sama came two persons. One was very tall, a man with red hair, perhaps in his early twenties, with well-defined eyebrows that makes the person have the air of being gallant and strong-willed. The other person, a blonde, 
Its coloration is even lighter in comparison to the blonde hair of one's own family. It is somewhat of an elegant feeling. A boy? The age seems to be in the teens. Because it is still young the features are neutral, but it seems to be that of a male. The hair is grown out, and tied behind the back. They seem somewhat nervous, with the middle of the forehead wrinkled. Yup, either way, both of them are very good looking. I, for the moment, resemble my mother's more plain face. Beautiful people are very dazzling. However I only have a simpler face right now. A woman can change themselves at any time. Cuteness can be made. Nevertheless as for the appearances of the magician Sama that arrived in the village, they were encompassed by long and heavy robes like for formal wear. It is something really fitting for a genuine magician. Is it cosplay? I mean, to be honest, I thought that some type of skilled Ojizan type person would come. Young people coming was a surprise. I can't believe that these youngsters have the knowledge and technology to do something about this worn out field. If I had to guess, those people over there are probably the escorts of the magician. Clad in iron armor were knight like middle aged men. They seem to be dependable. I mean to say, this knight like appearance, it was the first time seeing it since birth. By the way, right now I, along with my elder brothers, are peeping from the gap of the door. Presently, the magician party by the entrance of the village, with the bald village mayor that person is the mayor, were exchanging greetings while stealthily being watched from one's house. It seems like the formal greetings have ended, the mayor took the magician along with him and began to present the village's fields. A belt of farmland extends from the village at the center, its shape forms around our house in turn. The grown-ups are going about outside, the magician is now in the flow of receiving a welcoming. Perhaps we. The children of the village can also do the same, I am sure of it from peeping through the crevice of the window and the crack between the door. While the mayor is showing the field, he frowns and shakes one's head from side to side. Perhaps, this field is useless, and it completely can't grow anything at all at probably what is being said. Then, the red-haired magician had, after a composed nod crouched down, touched the earth with his hands while looking at the fields, started to move his mouth. Can you even see the quality of the soil from doing that? With a pose similar to the starting race crouch. Perhaps this or get ready. Get set, go signal to start. I personally think it is pointless. What cheers were being heard? In a fluster, the field was seen, the dry land rice. They were steadily growing. Seriously, what is this? Right now the dry land rice plants are growing with a dancing slithering motion. What kind of thing is this? A. Eh? What is going on here? What is this strange scene? M. Um, pause. C. B. Exclamation mark. Hey, perhaps this might be. By any chance, magicians are genuine magicians. Dot, dot, can it be? So, in other words, a reincarnation into different world? The so-called dot dot swords and magical fantasy. I had read about these from the previous life. While recollecting the stories and movies of the fantasy genre, my three-year-old self had finally understood the current state of reality. Agricultural village arc 7, the mage finally came. I could just be a mage. There was a period that I thought so. Come on, I thought that mage equals a person who has technologies from advanced countries. Right? That. What is that? I could barely hear what he had said though. Once he spoke of an incantation sort of language, the crops started to grow. What is that magic? So fantastic. The delicious fish dish in front of me was so shockingly good that it is unacceptable to even criticize it. Currently, my village is holding a banquet to welcome the arrival of the mage Samas. The villagers did not own a building that could fit many people at once, so they had to make do with a flat land near the village and held a campfire-like event by setting up a fire. Tables and chairs were prepared and the villagers began their merrymaking. Pre-ordered wine that was imported from somewhere was taken out for the occasion. Also, the villagers' song and dance Anichans were diligently attending to the mage Samas, or more like, the Anichans were feasting their eyes. Well. I could sort to understand. Both the mages were beautiful. Nevertheless, to the mage Samas, the village's song and dance girls couldn't even make it in the qualifiers, so their attitudes towards the hospitality was rather cold. With a nonchalant face, 
They received their wines from the dancing girl that had poured it for them. Are they trying to say rural girls are lacking? Right at the start of the feast, the mages had done a simple self-introduction to everyone. The senior one who has red hair was Sehi equals Nanawazu-san, a spirit user. The other one was a long hair youth, a magician called Ryaki equals Yujekawa-san. Among mages, there seem to be something that is different between magicians and spirit users. I don't quite get it though. I mean, is it alright because all I see is the 10 plus years old young mage drinking alcohol? I wonder if it is because it is another world that the common sense here is different from mine. The elites of the Garagari village seem to be in a defeated state but, at least the visitors were pleased with the village's prided cooking. While the village chief received good comments about the dishes, he was widening his mouth and putting food in. Well, it is tasty after all. The dishes were grilled herb fish, which ingredients were just harvested today as a main, whereas the soup was made from fry stock with watercress and beans, a wild vegetable salad, and finally, noodles made with the stem of dandelions. Needless to say, I am the one that cooked the rice and fish together. The village only has salt, so in order to enhance the taste, I obtained fish stock and used herbs, creating a unique and profound taste. Ha! Huh. I observed the mages from a relatively close distance, and heaved a sigh of relief as it seems that they have not noticed me nor their surroundings. I was suspected of being mage in this village, and was thus, made to take a seat that was close to the mages' sama. The villagers would eventually choose a suitable time to inquire to the mages' sama whether I was a mage. What shall I do? They definitely would ask about it. My dad and mum who sat near me were already fidgeting in their seats like mad. Stop. Don't be so nervous. Stop staring at me with eyes full of expectations. According to the village chief, if a mage is born from a commoner, the entire family would be invited to stay at the capital and would be promised an entire life of peace and prosperity. Also, since this village is under the territory of the aristocrats, it would be a life, comparing with my current lifestyle, which offers more conveniences. Coo, the dazzling gaze from my parents are painful. But, to put it clearly, I am not a mage. Up till today, the villagers were still telling me that I could just be a mage. When they said that, I would reply it can't be, can't be. For me to be one dash, impossible, you fu fu. Seeing that there is some tension, the not at all bad Ryu Chan would appear though. When I knew that a mage is a mage, no more like, when I understood that this was a different world, I have vehemently declared that definitely not a mage, 100% not. What a failure. Ryu Chan the failure. I'm afraid of betraying the expectations of my parents. Even so, this village seems to be prosperous. Despite the kind of condition the fields are in right now, everyone's complexion looks good. I didn't think that such great food could be prepared. The red hair spirit user Seki-san was helping himself to the food and appeared to be real surprised. While chatting with the village chief, you see the truth is, the kids in the village have been catching fishes in the nearby river and discovering edible wild grasses too. We did not, frankly speaking, do much harvesting in the fields but... Thanks to that, we were able to live more comfortably than before. Honestly, the current situation is that we are sustaining ourselves daily not with the harvest from the fields but from the foraging of the kids. The villagers' kids. That's amazing. How did they catch those fishes? To the question posed by the red hair mage, the village chief smiled with a broad grin, and started clapping his hands. The village chief is more exuberant than I thought. After the signal, the males, with heavy footsteps, moved the small fry trap and the pseudo thousand teeth tool, and then, the village chief looked in my direction and nodded vigorously, agricultural village arc 8, judgment time dash, here is the young lady that I certainly wish to introduce to both mages Sama, she might be small but, for the sake of this village's development, she has invented several tools. Please do listen to this child for the story of how she invented the fish capturing tool and advanced this village's development. Next, at a comfortable pace, I walked over to introduce myself to the mages. Nice to meet you. I am Ryu from the Garigari village. 
I'm three this year. Please allow me to explain about the tools. The mages gave an astonished look as they looked upon me. To think that this three years old could be so fluent in the language and that the village chief wasn't kidding when he said the child was really just a kid. Such could be seen from the amazement on their faces. It's okay to be trembling in fear. I, who seemed to be possessed by a god, had presentation skills that had more worth than the mages. My parents have got to see me in action. And then, I gestured with my hand and said without any stutter on the workings of the small fry trap, and with the application of this design, it could be used to catch bigger fishes. Next, I explained about the thousand teeth thresher and also mentioned how it can be improved. I see, due to the application of the thousand teeth thresher, work hours have been shortened and with that extra time, more straw can be braided. In addition, with the tools made with straw, fish or wild grasses can be gathered. That's wonderful. We need to spread this to other agricultural villages. The young mage Ryaki started to get into a state of excitement and started touching the thousand teeth thresher and straw made tools. Viewing the tools at all sorts of angles, he confirmed the inner workings of these tools. For a guy with a reserved face to be that excited, doesn't he know basic manners, that he shouldn't be touching the items on display without permission? They aren't really display items though. Even then, he seemed to be intensely studying the tools. I wonder if it would be better if I gave an explanation. The plant straw is a symbol of bountiful harvest too, and lumber is also part of a plant. These are farming tools after all. Since I wish to document the creation of these inventions, village chief, how many stalks of straw you might have and how much timber do you have? Could you provide some? The mage Ryaki-san said so while creating a tense atmosphere since nobody understood his intentions, the village chief proceeded with his request. The village chief was taken aback by such a sudden request, and while fretting over the request, he called out to a nearby woman to bring roughly ten bundles of straw and some wood sticks. Ryan Kisan picked out three stalks of straw and started singing something. Inetsukba kakaruaka tu wokoi ohimoka tonon akugoga dorit naj kamu. Amatsukes kumana kale hiji fukito geo otomana sugata shabashito demimu. After doing so, the straw that Ryaki san was holding on to started moving on their own and before you it, it became a small fry trap. Ooh! Mage Sama's abrupt magical performance was met with enthusiastic cheers from the village. I got very excited as well. You know, this thing is real awesome. What a mage, huh? Furthermore, to have completed it with only three stalks of straw, how did he do it with so little? Unbelievable. Next, as though he couldn't hear the excitement from the crowd, Ryan Kisan grabbed the timber and pierced onto the ground while also singing something like an incantation. The timber grew larger and became a completed thousand teeth thresher that was far more well done than the one I, in actuality, it was Mayana Chan who made it, made. The villagers became wild yet again. Seriously? Somehow, my feelings have transcended amazement. Anger? Jealousy? This is quite the strong sense of helplessness. This thousand teeth thresher took us great pains to complete. Not only did I injured my arm for this. Actually it was my bro. My hands were also roughed up by it. Actually it was my bro, and I spent many nights on it too. Actually it was my bro. Despite it taking so much time, even though it looks kinda unrefined, I did it as conscientiously as possible- dash. Actually it was my bro. The mage managed to get it done in the twinkle of an eye. Furthermore, it was better made. G-I-L-G-I. My insides of my heart were squirming in bitterness. And even as I sent a destructive beam across, the mage Ryaki-san doesn't seem to be bothered by it and gave me a smile that was full of enjoyment while walking over to me. Thank you. This tool is really wonderful. With something like this. This fledging industry should be able to flourish. I desperately suppressed my twitching cheeks as I conveyed the idea that so long as it is useful then it is a good thing. Next, the village chief that has been watching attentively the flow of events started to make his move. Dear Mages Sama, I'm sure that after looking at these tools and understanding them, you would come to the conclusion that this child is really intelligent. It has been said in the village that she could just be a mage. What should be done? The atmosphere grinded to a halt instantly. 
It's because the villagers are immensely curious about whether Yu Chan could possibly be a mage. I see. Indeed, to be able to come up with such a tool does indicate some rare talent. Magic manifests itself on people mainly through heredity but, there are times when a village far from the capital would have a child born with strong magic powers. I shall investigate further. Hearing what the village chief had just said, the spirit user Seki coolly bowed his head in assent, and gestured for me to follow him. The time for judgment has finally arrived. Speaking of which, after watching Yuki-san skillfully using magic, how can there be people who still think I can use magic? They are totally mistaken, fundamentally wrong. I and magic completely don't match. As I thought, the villagers and parents were beaming at me with sparkling eyes that were full of hopes and aspirations. Ku, it's no good. They have yet to have given up. Stop staring at me with those glittering eyes. However, I have no choice. I slowly moved my feet over to Seki the spirit user. Agricultural village arc 9 The things that I can do. Can you see what's on my shoulder? As I approached Seki-san. He pointed out to his right shoulder and asked me. Hey, there is nothing on his shoulders though, just plain air, am I supposed to be seeing something? This could be a criterion for a mage, just to be safe. I took a good long look at it, but I still couldn't see anything. Nope, sorry, there seems to be nothing. Is that so? Well then, how about checking on Yuki, the subject of the conversation? Yuki-san nodded deeply. And after staring in a distance for a second, he held up his right hand. What do you see on this side? I tried taking a look at Yuki-san's right hand. Likewise, there wasn't anything, just empty space. I don't see anything special. Do you not see a glittering light? I knew mages would be able to perceive something there. A glittering light, huh? Still, I can't see it. Sorry. It's just normal to me. Is that so? Yuki-san murmured to himself while giving a complete disappointed look. Similarly, Seki-san's face looked like a disappointed one. I understand what's going on. I understand but... Seki-san put on the mysterious face that TV hosts would put on before a big reveal, and announced the verdict. Village chief. Unfortunately, this child isn't a mage. Triple A. The villagers strongly sighed and their dejected voices could be heard. Even the chief's shoulders started to slump down. I was kinda afraid to even look at the reaction of father and mother. Dash dash. The banquet was over, and on the very same day, the village chief provided a vacant house for the mages to stay for a night before traveling again. The mages were compelled by the country to follow a messy schedule so they had to leave after one night. Also, they wanted to spread to other villages what they saw in this village, the groundbreaking farming tools that were made by Ryu Chan. Dot. Speaking of which, are the fields all right now? The mages came and made the crops grow all of a sudden but, have they made any changes to the quality of the soil? I am thinking of making full use of the information of my previous life to improve the quality of life for the villagers. It might be possible. However, it is possible that this world may have no need for such scientific knowledge and information. It's like with magic, this world is complete. Somehow, I felt like the purpose in my life was lost. My heart aches. Still, even then, there should be something I can do. If I work hard at what I can do, I can make my family, the villagers and everyone else happier. I have no doubt that I would be happier this life. Agricultural village arc 10 experiment and an unexpected visitor, and thus, the mages left and many months flew by, as I predicted, or more like. Somehow, the fields were indeed infertile. What in the world is this? The soil quality didn't show any signs of improvement, and we didn't even plant any crops after that, too. After the mages managed to speed up the growth of the plants, we harvested it, retilted the land, removed the weeds and replanted. However, similar to the situation beforehand, or more like, to a greater extent, it seems that the plants are unable to grow. Wow, a mage is so great. If I could be a mage, I was seriously harboring such thoughts yet this is such a letdown. It is a tragic loss. The magic by the mages only had a temporary effect. Thus, magic isn't really all that omnipotent. After all, the very act of magic is performed by humans. It probably isn't a complete thing. Somehow, 
I feel a slight affinity to mages. Both the mages managed to look cool even after their Ikaman masks were taken off, but at the end of the day, they are still human. Gufafu. I have no idea why but my chest is feeling all tight. The Garagari village was again vexing over the issue of crop failure, though it seems that the village chief has already anticipated the current phenomenon and said a a, as I thought, when the mages came to the village. In the past, a phenomenon like this had happened, at that time, the plants managed to grow after they casted their spell, but after that, it felt as though the yields had decreased, if you knew that, you could have informed the mages about it. Village chief. The village chief must have been caught up in all that tension when he saw the crops steadily growing due to the spell, and forgotten to say anything. Yeah, I can kinda understand that. After seeing that, I instantly became dumbstruck. I understand, nevertheless, at the corner of the village was a field that didn't seem to be affected by the crop failure phenomenon and had plants that were sprouting. That's right, it's the Jiruangchen's field which was incidentally supervised by Ryu Chan. If I had possessed magic, I would have taken it easy since any effort put into developing their agriculture would be meaningless. This is what I feel from the depths of my heart. Being a dark horse to a certain extent, to reduce the risks, I prepared countermeasures that were worthwhile. In the end, Jiru Anchen became 15 years old and having been recognized as an adult, he became the owner of his own field. Although I might say that, it's not that a new piece of land was cleared, it was simply just a portion of Otasan's land that was transferred to him. The soft-spoken young man Juru Anchen did not raise any objections and nods willingly to what I tell him to do. Not only is he soft-spoken, he is quite the obedient type too. Together with Mary Anchen, who was in charge of taking care of me, I and Juru Anchen gave our all to the fields. I who holds memories of my past life, would be more than capable to handle the cultivation of the crops. I held this thought for a period of time but now, given that I'm a greenhorn at this, I would need to do some trials first. Firstly, I divided Jeru Anchen's land into four divisions, one mixing the ashes of straw and weeds to the soil. This field by the riverside had a mix of Jeromame, Tianjicene soja or wild soybean and rice grown together, to no addition of ashes and had a mix of jjerumame and rice growing field, three field which soil was mixed with the same kind of ashes but only rice is grown here, for nothing is grown here, and now, the one the field that provided the best growth for crops is the one field which had cinders mixed into it and had jjerumame and rice growing in it, runner up his field too which didn't have cinders mixed into its soil while both rice and jjerumame grew on it, there wasn't a big difference in performance between these fields however, of course, since two varieties of crop were cultivated in these fields, the amount of rice growing was halved, nevertheless, the field which was monoculture was basically completely wiped out, so even if half of the crops in field 1 and 2 managed to grow, it would still be way better. Field 3's had fertilizer cinders added and compared to the villagers' fields which didn't use any fertilizer, there were still not a big difference as both kinds ended in total annihilation. Therefore, the most important factor is the addition of the bean plants. Does everybody understand? The above summary was presented by yours truly, in the recently inaugurated villagers meeting. This was to facilitate the sharing of knowledge in agriculture and other informative matters on a regular basis. I initiated it using a teacher's pointer, made out of a stick, to draw explanatory diagrams, no words, drawings only, while reporting on the agriculture experiment was me, Newton the four years old. After the incident when Yu Chan was confirmed not to be a mage, the villagers were, at the beginning, dejected. Still, it's not like my level of excellence decreased or anything. Thus I managed to keep my status as an exceptional child due to my appeal as a desperately hard-working kid. Yes, I have a question. Why was Field 4 made empty? Yep, that's a good question. A rather good question indeed, son of the village chief. It's so that I can experiment to see the effects of letting the field rest. It's called fallow farmland. After harvesting the crops planted this round, 
I plan to plant seeds in the fallow farmland and observe the growth of the crops just like that. The lecture started and ended without a big fuss. From the onset, I started acting cute and spoke with a lisp but I eventually got tired of doing so. The villagers didn't find it extraordinary and embarrassing so it became a Yuchan thing to put adults to shame, extrapolating my growth. I dare say that someday, I would become the village chief based on merit. Yeah, I'm awfully sorry but you've got to settle for vice village chief, son of the chief, Amu. Dash 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 it has been one year since I have started meddling in agriculture. We started to obtain a considerable improvement in crop yield. We conclusively found that a fallow farmland is beneficial for overall cultivation and made it mainstream. The field is usually divided into three portions, one of which would be the fallow farmland and would undergo a rotation system. Just that, more research has to be done regarding the fertilizer since fertilizer made with the ashes of the weeds isn't that effective. Something like humus would be great I guess. Ideally we would have a paddy field though. What's next would be to raise the levels of production of both rice and beans so that I can seriously work on developing miso or soy sauce. I believe that is my eventual goal. I was awoken by my parents, who were grinning broadly while doing so. They were introducing me to some guy, judging from his appearance. He seems to be in his late twenties and had black hair. His name seems to be Claude equals Rainforest. He is likely to be affluent based on his appearance. My other brothers were still asleep, naturally. It is currently before daybreak and the outside world is wrapped in darkness. I was partially asleep though, but my mind was still sharp, it's because I had a hunch that something very unpleasant is about to happen. Next, the man held out his hand, cracked a smile and said, shall we go together? My mother and father were seated around the table, and on that table were three pieces of silver coins. I ascertained the situation and then, my thoughts grinded to a halt. New Chan is an obedient and good child. Surely you would understand right? Okar-san said that to me while giving off the feeling that she was gazing at me from a far far place away. Just like that, I was sold and became the black-haired man's property. I got on the horse-drawn coach together with the man. A.A. Again, I wasn't loved. Recollection Chapter 1 In my previous life, my family was well-to-do. I was the only daughter of the director of a major hospital. Both my mom and dad were Dr. Samas, so they were always busy. When I grew up and became aware of things around me, my parents were technically non-existent at home, and a maid son would always be at the house between 1400 hours and 1700 hours to cook and handle the chores before returning home. I would always have spare time and would mainly pass time by reading books, before long. I could sense that both my dad and mom made extramarital lovers outside. For kids, just by observing their parents, they can perceive such things as they are very sensitive to their parents' emotions and behavior. And then, dad and mom narrowly managed to hold on to their marriage, though I recognized that their main reason for doing so was because I existed. Therefore, I thought that I had to work extra hard to maintain our amiable family of three with this as motivation. I worked hard on all kinds of things, and pushed myself to the fullest, be it studies, sports or the arts. I would always aim to reach the top in my studies, from sports such as table tennis, tennis, track and field to the martial arts like kendo and archery. I participated in an extensive number of tournaments, and polished myself until I attained victory at a decently large tournament. I went back and forth from the classroom to attend lessons in the aesthetics, such as painting, playing the piano and playing the violin. Similarly, I also made sure to continue until I won prizes at contests in any of the disciplines. Immediately after I obtained the trophy or prize, I would let my parents take a look at it, and would always be waiting for their reactions. Both my dad and mom would praise me. I was happy. However, there was nothing else apart from their praises. It's not like there was an increase in family time. It's not like dad and mom cut off contact from their extramarital partners. It was frustrating. I thought I hadn't put in enough effort. And then, I ran out of things to impress my parents within the 17 years old me was in a fluster. 
No matter what kind of excellent grades I bring, back home, even if I became the very best, my parents didn't come home. As I became an adult, I had the feeling that my ability to keep my parents' marriage was growing weaker. Being unable to express this to them, I was in a tormented state of anxiety. It was at that point of time I went home from school, using the same old route I always do. The usual pedestrian crossings traffic light had turned green. From where I was, I could hear the loud noise of a car's engine from a distance, suggesting that its momentum was way too much to stop in time. However, I don't know if I was impatient or something, somehow, I had the impression that I, I didn't hear it, and simply crossed the pedestrian crossing. The next moment, I was knocked over and I died. I'm pretty sure I died, but I did not have to savor the taste of the afterlife and instead, reincarnated to this world. I was surprised at the fact that my memories were still intact, though I am sure the Kami-sama must have rewarded me with this since I worked so hard in the past. I was given another chance. This time, I would be loved by my parents. I really wanted to feel the kind of selfless love that parents give their children. In my previous life, I gave up friends and lovers alike so that I can devote myself to the family. I had no real hobbies. Now, I can have a fresh start. After I am loved by my parents, my world would surely feel expanded. To me, parents represent the very essence of my world. This hasn't changed even if I am in a parallel world. For this world, I would persevere to do so. I wouldn't hesitate to expend all my strength. Nevertheless, the reincarnated me still wasn't loved. I was an existence traded away for three silver coins. I have never seen anything beyond iron coins, so I have no idea how much silver coins are worth but, I suppose what I have achieved so far is still lighter than the value of three silver coins. Love can be bought for three silver coins. Oh, I could be wrong, maybe I wasn't loved in the first place. My parents belong to the house of laissez-faire and do not concern themselves with their children at all. The same treatment was given to my other brothers, so I didn't pay attention to it. It can't be helped since we are poor. Well, ever since I was born, in order to ensure nobody would complain about the poverty, I worked to exhaustion and our lives should have been improved. Such were my foolish parents. Compared to three silver coins, by keeping me, there was no mistake that they would be able to enjoy permanent improved living. Despite this, or perhaps, could it be that my efforts weren't sufficient? Should I have had advanced the development of the village at a faster rate? Wait, on the contrary, it could be that I had accelerated the development too much, and because I was rated too highly, there were people willing to fork out three silver coins for me? Had I been a mage, this kind of thing probably wouldn't have happened either. At that time, if I had pretended to see what the mages wanted me to see, I wonder what would have happened. Let's stop the speculations. No matter how many if I come up with, it is futile. I would be alone from now on. And just like mud, I would live until I die. Dash 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 dash. I opened my eyes while in the swaying coach. While I was lost in thought, I seemed to have taken a small nap. Light was seeping through from the gaps in the coach. It could already be noon time. I am hungry. To be hungry at this juncture, I must be quite a cheeky fella. I felt like I couldn't carry on living after abandoned by my parents but, I wonder if I could lead another kind of splendid life. May dark one waking up in the coach. After waking up, I surveyed the surroundings in the coach. The area was piled up with all kinds of goods. It seemed as though I was imprisoned along with the other merchandises in the carriage. Salt, dried meat, dried fish, porcelain some kind of mineral, fruits, vegetables, rice, glass bottles, cloth, etc. The place was filled to the brim with things I have never seen before. The traveling merchant that appears at Garagari village at fixed intervals didn't deal with that many goods. I mean, there are even glass bottles here. The merchant that visits Garagari village would usually be trading salt, vegetables, fish and cloth only. Despite the limited selection, the villagers are always looking forward to the visit by the traveling merchant. They would trade Garagari village's specialty, rice and beans for salt and vegetables while exchanging straw-made products for cash. And then, with the iron coins saved up from the sale, 
They would purchase cloth made goods. Humphrey, watching as far as I can from the inside of the coach, I could see a person that seems more highly ranked than the usual traveling merchant that visits the village. I'm certain that the person that purchased me was called Claude San or something, and despite being young, he was quite a capable person. However, my body was free and I wasn't tied up by a rope. Claude San appears to be seated at the coachman's seat and there wasn't another single soul in the carriage. Just me and the goods alone. Dot I can make my escape any time? I wonder what would happen to me from now on. Now that I have been purchased, I wonder what job I would have to do. Or maybe, I would be resold again. The current me is something like a slave. Based on what I know from my previous life, a slave is someone forced to work under considerably harsh manual labor. A girl might have to be a prostitute. I don't have a good feeling about this. Dot shall I run away? As I was thinking, I heard a conversation beyond the cloth, TN, acting as the door between the carriage and coachman seat. Smith, is it about time to have our meals? Although I must say, the portable food isn't really enjoyable. I'm pretty sick of it already. Well, well, there's just a little more before we reach our estate. Claude Sama, has the clay doll like person at the back made any sound? Clay doll like. Stop joking. I forked out three silver coins for that, you know. AA, if she continues to stay like that, I would really be making a big loss. I even went all the way to the countryside to bring her here. A. The clay doll refers to me. That's completely rude. While contemplating on their conversation, I glared in their direction. With a light rustle, the cloth that divides the coachman's seat and the carriage was turned over by Claude San as he looked in this direction. In a flash, our eyes met. Or more like, he was assessing me to a great extent. At any rate, Claude San's eye color was yellow-green shade, a rather rare kind of color, I suppose. The residents of Garagari village had brownish eye colors. Mine was a bright, light brown too. Somehow, he removed his gaze on me for a moment, had another sudden inclination to watch me and looked straight at me again. I don't like it. Staring at me like that, could it be love at first sight? Or maybe he was a lilikin or something. Here, want to eat this? While staring, he suddenly held out something that looked like bread. Is he feeding a zoo animal? Algae. Gladly take it. I couldn't fight my stomach, so I timidly accepted it. As I did so, Claude's and face turned to that of wonder, and shouted with an abrupt, strange voice. She, she talked dash 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 dash. The horses were frightened, and made high, hin cries, causing the coach to sway violently. The man that was acting as the coachman, soothed the confused horses with woe, woe. I too had been alarmed at Claude Sand's shrieking, and instinctively dropped the bread I was given. The bread landed on the floor with a reverberating thud while thinking what is this loudness? It must have been a rock-hard bread. I started preparing myself for the eccentric lilican, Claude Sand's, next movement. May dark to an aristocrat. Oh no, sorry. Looks like I frightened you said Claude Sand as he picked me up with agility and put me down on the seat adjacent to him. Now that has happened, I became interposed between the coachman San and him. Next, he picked up the stiff bread and returned it to me. He was skilled with children. As expected, he must be a lilikin. You're a lilikin, right? As I crunched on the bread, I kept my guard against Claude San. Still, I'm glad, after you were bought, you really became doll-like and made no reaction at all. I thought you might have been dead. Your eyes looked hollow and couldn't focus. You didn't talk nor eat when offered a meal, and only took small mouthful at most. A.A., I'm really so relieved, said Claude San as he tapped on my head with a satisfied look. I became dazed as I realized how worried he was for me. I had the feeling that roughly half a day has passed but judging from what Claude San had said, it could have possibly been an entire day already. I have made you worried, by the way. How long has it been since we left the village? Ooh. You can speak clearly right good stuff. It has been around one week since we left. He appeared satisfied with every single detail of my reaction and nodded as though he was super shocked. One week you say? I had no idea that so much time had passed. No memories of that at all. Was I in that big a shock? Currently, I've reached the point of resignation, but on the contrary, I feel more at ease. Still, if we think about it, I'm still a five years old child. 
I might have resigned myself to all sorts of things but even that requires some time. That is, I really have made you concerned. Incidentally, since I was purchased, what would I be made to do? Yes, you must be bothered by that too. In reality, I want you to do this. Is what I like to announce but, at the moment, it hasn't been decided what your role would be. Well, we will soon be approaching my home according to the schedule. Before that though, are the rumors that say you invented the thousand teeth thresher true? Invent? How should I put it? Um, I did something like that I guess. Truthfully, it was invented by a person a long time ago, but explaining that would be too troublesome so I shall omit it. Claude San repeatedly nodded his head, and looked very pleased as he was very content with my reply. Once we arrived at my home, you will be living together with us. There will be an aristocrat Bok Chan that is around your age so, I expect you to keep him company. The plan for your life hereafter is that you would be receiving schooling apart from being taken care of, if by any chance, my younger sister takes a liking to you, she might buy you over, so there is a possibility that I have to turn you into a maid. Well, that's what I think. I see, it was made very clear that I would be working at their residence. Therefore, the treatment is much better that I have had imagined. It might be a better decision not to escape and remain in the coach. Speaking of which, is this person an aristocrat? He did address the Bok Chan as an aristocrat too. Are you an aristocrat? Claude Sama, being asked such a question, Claude San face darkened to some extent, and gave an answer immediately, nope, I'm not, my family might be of nobility but, despite being born in that kind of family, after I became a matured adult, I lost my aristocracy as I wasn't a mage, in my scenario, since I studied business, I was a given a quasi-aristocrat title of merchant shaku, nevertheless, it is planned that my younger sister, who has the genes for magic, would inherit my family's court rank. Your peers would be my sister's children. There are two of them. And one of them is the Bok Chan who can genuinely use magic. So basically, as long as a person cannot use magic, he or she cannot be an aristocrat. That's the gist of it. Speaking of which, you must be unaware of the details of an aristocrat because you were raised in a farming village. Simply speaking. A non-magic user would be unable to be an aristocrat. Since the capability to use magic is determined by one's genes, people with such genes would inherit our property and land. Those born from nobility and yet not blessed with magic genes can still be an aristocrat if they marry a mage from some aristocracy. My brother did that. He became a groom and was made the supervisor of the land surrounding your village. This was the brother whom I heard the information about the thousand teeth thresher and fish trap tool from. My brother was in disbelief about it though. Oh, there's such a rumor about me. It seems like there are people who don't believe it too. For now, I shall entrust myself to Claude San. Rather than escaping in this state, I shall try living on just like that. If by any chance, the people at Claude Sands' residence have terrible personalities and I am forced to do harsh manual labor. It would still be good to make my escape then. In any case, this person seems like the careless type so this plan should work. After Claude San finished what he was saying, he rummaged through the pile of bags at the back and took out a book. By the way, are you able to read and write words? I wonder if it was the language of my previous life. I shouldn't have any problems but... For a fleeting moment, I saw the front cover of the book that Claude San was holding and couldn't recognize the characters on it. No, I am unable to. I see. Your manner of speaking seems excessively fluent so I had assumed that you were well versed in the language but, it's because the village doesn't have education for language right? Just to be sure, I carried this book along. I would be reading this book to you on the way to the residence so I want you to, at the very least. Memorize some of these words. As he said so, he lifted the me that was crunching on the bread, placed me on his lap and opened the book that was in front of me. Unfamiliar characters and words lay side by side in the book. It appears that this parallel world has their own language. Claude San read out loudly and slowly for me. He doesn't seem like a bad guy. May Dark 3 arrival at the residence. It has been roughly two days since I awoken and we are now making our grand arrival at the residence. 
the residence was shaped like a comma and there were three separate buildings inside in total. I expected the residence to be located right at the heart of the shopping district since they are of nobility. However, it was located at a far more deserted place that I had imagined. The residence was surrounded by lush greenery, overgrown trees and the fields. This entire place is sticking out like a sore thumb if you take a glance at the countryside. The residence looked like a stone-made castle. Normally, from what I know, some kind of adhesive between the stone blocks is needed in order to construct this kind of structure. Yet, this building doesn't seem to have that kind of adhesive and relied solely on gigantic stone blocks instead. It is highly probable that an enigmatic magical skill had been employed in the construction process. While traveling, we had passed by a town and even then, the buildings there seemed to be constructed with the same mysterious skill. This was unexpected. This place is so peaceful. Is that so? I do think quiet places like these are the best places to live in. Most other aristocrats think the same way too. Well, the other aristocrats that live in the capital have differing views though. Claude San who made such a reply was probably in a peace of mind as he smiled radiantly across his haggard face. It must because he was finally returning home. The coach that we had been up till now was being moved off to somewhere else by Smith San the coachman. Claude San rotated his arms and neck. Once he was done stretching, he started patting his crumpled western-style clothes and made a pan-pan sound while doing so. The wrinkles and crumples on his white shirt, black vest and pants disappeared after much patting, giving him a neat look. I too, just in case this was some rule, tidied my outfit. Although, I get the feeling that there is no end to cleaning the dress. The dress I was wearing since I wore at Garagari village was a one-piece that looked like a t-shirt and was very dirty. I tried to use my hands to comb my hair but, my hair which was allowed to grow as long as it wanted to extend it all the way down to my navel, making me look quite like a Medusa. It's not like I had any other option other than using my hands. After giving some time for both of us to prepare our appearance, Claude San rang on the bell and a maid-like woman appeared from the door. As though Claude San was an acquaintance, she said, Claude Sama, welcome home. After giving her greetings, she bowed down respectfully and entered the residence and guided us to the guest room. In the entire process, my existence was ignored. Our eyes didn't even meet. Shucks, what a scary maid of the upper class. Given that our eyes didn't meet at all, the maid must have not seen me. I started considering the wild idea that I was invisible but the maid did prepare a fresh entrance for me after all. So she must have seen me. At any rate, she prepared black tea. This sweet-smelling fragrance, there is no doubt this is black tea. So this parallel world has tea too. What a good discovery. While I was at the farm village, I drank a herb tea made with the herbs found that could be considered an imitation of tea. But still, black tea is the best. Mew, this drink might be a little too bitter for the preference for most kids but we have sugar and if you dissolve it into the tea, it would taste sweeter. Splosh. Claude San dropped a cube sugar into my cup. Oi I oh, if I actually prefer unsweetened tea, what am I supposed to do? Well, I actually have a sweet tooth so it's actually alright. Rather, I like to receive two to three more please. Now that it is sweeter, it is tastier. Claude Sama. Arigato Ugozaimasu. Giving my thanks after having a sip of the tea, Claude San then stroked my hair while nodding happily. This person is really gentle. Still, I can't discriminate between a person that likes children in general and a lilican. Nevertheless, the vibes from the residence is really on a whole new level when compared with Garagari village. The cup was made out of porcelain and the spoon out of silver. Boldly colored flowers were blooming in full glory in a glass vase and there were window panes too. Back when I was at the Garagari village, I didn't think that porcelain and glass made goods were available in this world. What's with this stratified society? This is too outrageous. Perhaps I could see a machine made product as well. Soon after, I thought I heard a boisterous commotion from outside the room and with a bang, the door opened. A beautiful and seemingly strong willed woman that had similar features with Claude San, such as her black hair and her pea green eyes, stood from open door. Anisama, where have you been? You vanished all of a sudden, she yelled. 
A raging beautiful woman is crazily scary. Iron, I have worried you. Please don't be too mad at me. Claude San said as he stood up and as though she was his long lost sister, he attempted to give her a deep embrace, but Miss Iron had not forgiven him and stopped him by slapping him with her left palm. The staggering Claude San made a groaning off a sound and retreated back with a few steps. Hey, please don't dodge the problem. Claude Anizama, where and what did you do? I'm sure you knew that we were so busy that I would even borrow the help of a cat. Ahahaha. She was raging like the queen of a house. Claude San stood up from his seat and approached me while looking at me. Please no, don't involve me in this mess. In order to buy this child, I went all the way to Anu's territory. Ah. I'm so exhausted said Claude San. He proceeded to give me a push from the back, and as though I was a shield, he brought me straight in the face of Irene San. Now you've gotten me involved. My eyes met with Irene San's. Who is this kid? I could feel her saying that based on how she looked at me, she examined me from bottom to top and slightly tilted her head to the side in puzzlement. Cute. According to information I received from Claude San earlier, Irene San is already a mother of a son, but she hardly seemed like one, more like a teen under the age of 20. I am you from the Garigari village, please treat me kindly. I greeted her faultlessly. Hey, who is this shabby child? Dot could she be a mage? Irene San face glimmered with a candid expression of anticipation. No, I am not a mage. Irene San's face became tainted with the color of disappointment. She is such an easy to understand person. In fact, out of all the things to ask, she decided to ask me if I was a mage. What was I supposed to say? To be full of expectation and disappointed as she pleases, that is so rude. She isn't even a mage, and you went all the way to buy this sloppy piece of child? Irene San began speaking to Claude San while disregarding my existence, given that I was ignored by the maid too. It looks like the percentage of me getting ignored while in the residence is fairly high. This child is extremely intelligent, or more like, a prodigy. During the return trip in the coach, I read her a book once and she became able to write the alphabets. Furthermore, above all, she is the inventor of the Thousand Teeth Thresher which is currently the talk of the city. How do you expect me to believe that? Isn't she just about the same age as my son? Yes, exactly. Since she is around that age, she would be a good companion to Alan and the others, or she could be a maid too. I had been selling goods while on the trip back, and I would like to discuss the future business operation with the people at the Merchant Guild later on, so I don't have much time to take care of her for now. No way, not this sloppy child, that so rude, if I put my heart at work, I would really do my best you know. Please don't say that Irene. Wasn't it because of my hard-to-please nephew, that bullied the hired companion come maid and caused her quit? And you became worried about it too. If it's this child, I'm sure it'll turn out fine. I've been thinking about your circumstances all this while you see. So Irene's son has a nasty personality. I really wish you didn't go saying that it'll be fine without asking for my opinion though. Next. Claude San made a smile full of gentleness and placed his hand on Irene's shoulder. Somehow, I have this bad premonition that my soul would be corrupted. Ma, Anisama, you have been thinking about me, huh? If that's the case, that, I can understand. I shall try using her then. After saying that, the two brother and sister gave one another a heartwarming embrace. Soon after, Claude San disappeared. He had taken full advantage of the situation. I understood from their conversation that I was to join the children who were having private lessons with their tutor, be a maid, serve Irene and so on. It seems that he had planned for his purchased goods, aka me, to gain an accelerated and gifted education for free. Claude San is really skillful. May dark for the aristocrats Bouchama. Tn. Bouchama is another version of Botchin just that it is more respectful and also adds a level of intimacy. After finishing with my greetings, I was guided along by the maid. I felt that she was treating me like a dirty rag as she made me follow her to take a medicated bath, scrub my body with a cloth, cleaned my hair and apart from that, she tied a ponytail for me and gave me a new set of clothes. The clothes given to me was a black long sleeves one piece and a white apron that was supposed to be worn around the waist. Cool, 
This is so maidish. The other maids were wearing clothes with the same design so perhaps it is the uniform for all the servants here. The shoes were a pair of leather shoes and they were rather soft. The straw sandals I made by hand disappeared to somewhere else. Hey, there seemed a plenty of tiny sized maid attires that fit me here. Next, after going through the normal procedure of cleaning me, the maid that was in charge of washing me finally looked me straight in the eyes. I am Stella, the person in charge of taking care of Irina Kusama. You must have heard that you will serve as the maid to Alan Bouchama and Kane Bouchama. The both of them are presently studying at their private tutor's place but, they would be free soon and you shall kindly introduce yourself to them then. Why yes, I understand. Her expressionless and indifferent manner of speech somehow made me nervous. A maid for the upper class is so cold. Later on, I guess, the Bouchamas might treat their maid unreasonably so I hope that your clothes do not get soiled. I particularly dislike dirty things you see. Oh I see. She didn't look at me all this while because it was a problem of my appearance. Irene San might be a gorgeous woman but Stella San is also equally as pretty. Her light gold hair swooped down to her nose, and her overall looks can be compared to a sculpture of a goddess. Adding on her characteristic still face she usually puts on, calling her a sculpture is right on the mark. I saw other maid servants when I entered the residence and they too had fairly decent looks. There is definitely no mistake that one of the criteria to serve as a maid in this residence is beauty. Next. Stella San gave me a map of the residence and taught me the relevant information a maid needs to know such as knowing the location of the bathroom for maids, the important point is when washing herself, what one has to do when nature calls, and that servants will be specifically living in a specific building. Irene San ended her lecture and said it was about time, before dragging me out of the room. At last. It is the meeting with the Bouchamas. I didn't have a good hunch about this due to the earlier information but, now that I have become and an apprentice maid, I shall respond to my assigned task. Now, Stella San had stopped right before the door ahead of us. Somehow Stella San's facial expression is bad. Next, she looked like she was hardening her resolve, and knocked on the door. This is Stella Bouchamas today. Claude Sama has brought a new mate with him. Replying to her, a childlike voice which carried a proud tone emerged from the direction of the door. All right, you may enter. Strangely, Stella San urged me to be the one to open the door. Eh? Hey, wasn't I supposed to enter the room following behind Stella San? Is this all right? While considering the possibilities, I opened the door. I took a look inside the room from the entrance of the room but there was nobody around. While saying excuse me, I had closer look inside and hesitantly entered. Bashan. It was too sudden. At first, I had no idea what had occurred. Taking a look at myself, I noticed that my brand new apron had been stained by muddy water. My hair had become drenched too. The door behind me was slammed shut and it was likely Stella San who did that in order to shield herself from the murky water. I heard the sounds of footsteps walking away from the door so I guess Stella San must have simply left me here. In any case, I've grasped the situation and from the left of me, the children were breaking out in laughter. Ah ha 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 ha. Did you see that? Kane and Izama. Her face. Alan. This is no good. Facing the left. While squatting down and co-style tooltip, this is the kind of squatting position you do when you are pooping in a squat toilet. I saw a black hair kid in an explosive laughter and as we looked one another mutually, there was another reddish brown hair boy that was in a dither. Ma, even without confirming beforehand, I knew the black hair kid was the five years old Alan Bouchama, whereas the reddish brown boy was Kane Bouchama. Alan had the same black hair and pea green eyes as Claude San. His hair was a bob cut, and the evilness of his personality could be seen all over his face. It was a totally sinister face. On one side is Kane, who also had pea green eyes, but even though the brothers have similar features, the younger brother was distinct in that he had round eyes that reflect the kindness in his heart. Oi, what are you doing? Stop scrutinizing me. Alan started yelling impertinently. Amu. My squatting position changed to a Yankee eye style. I suppose I'm friends with all the bad boys. Yeah, I shall make my introductions. I am called Drew. From today onwards, I am the maid for Kane Sama and Alan Sama. I am very pleased to meet you. While I was dripping wet, 
I gave my greetings as if nothing had happened earlier. May Dark Five something like a duel. Stop pretending to be strong with that foul appearance of yours. Don't even think about entering this room. Where's your common sense? These are the very words by the fella that caused me to be dripping wet, and I was at my cleanest moment of my life just a few seconds ago too. Rest assured, bout charmer. When I entered the room, I was clean so your point on my lack of common sense do not apply I said it in a clear-cut manner. What's with your choice of difficult language? Don't get too cocky with your damas face. Because I am more superior. Because I'm a mage. Calling me a damas face. This brat. My plain looking face is temporary since there is no doubt I would grow to become a fabulous woman. Furthermore, whatever he said earlier doesn't contribute to the argument. This brat. I am very aware of that, bout charmer. Speaking of which, isn't the room dirty now? Shall we have it cleaned? If that's the case. Would you kindly step out of the room so that I can have whoever is in charge of cleaning to handle this? The weather is fine and it is a good day to be outside too. Shut up, dumbass. I don't take instructions from you. Again, this brat called me a dumbass. Are kids always so irritating? Wait a second, aren't I a kid too? There is a saying that even a Buddha will get angry after you touch it three times. I shall magnanimously forgive this child's words. Alan, why do you always snap at the new servants? In addition, I forbid you to receive anyone's help in cleaning up your mess. Earlier, Kane had been nervous but he seemed to have regained his composure and admonished his brother. Amu, this eight years old is well brought up, praiseworthy. Kane and Izama, but it's all because she is being audacious. Listen. Apologize now and clean the room. Got it, Kane and Izama. Somehow it seems that this shitty brat Alan is not going to disobey his brother even though he honestly cannot accept it. Oh my. I'm going to be apologized to. If that's the case, I wouldn't be a demon about it. I would willingly forgive you for calling Beardamus. However, I ain't gonna say sorry. I'll just clean the room. He's not apologizing. Rip my expectations. Anyways, isn't a room completed soiled by muddy water too much to handle for a five years old alone? Nevertheless, my concerns were unnecessary, as the shitty brat Alan placed his hands on the floor, and muttered an incantation. The muddy water that spilled all over the floor vanished gradually. Oh right. This shitty brat is a mage. I'm guessing that the muddy water appeared in the first place because of his magic. This is too convenient. Even the vacuum cleaner wouldn't be a match for that kind of absorption magic. All households should have at least one mage. Still, the shitty brat Alan. Are you aware that you've overlooked something? Alan Sama. I am currently soaking wet. Could I be cleaned as well? I tried my darndest in smiling. The biggest smile a five years old could give. Ha. Huh? Your current appearance is befitting for a dumbass face like you. Dot. W. What is this? That rebellious stare, you dare to go against me. Oops, that was too much bloodlust. I was nearly about to get all worked up by this lil' kitty companion of mine. Be cool, be cool. I was just about to stare this brat to death. Alan, that's a pathetic appearance you're putting on. Isn't this girl around the same age as you are? Oh dear, as expected of Kane Bout Charmer, impressive feminist. Eight-year-old Ikeman. This. There is no need to apologize to a dumbass servant sent over by Otisama or Okaasama, said Alan as he was on verge of tears. Hey, the one that should be crying is me. I'm still drenched here you know. Alan Kane Bout Charmer put his arm across Alan's shoulders, while calling his name in an effort to comfort him. Is this supposed to be some drama? And I have been abandoned at the sidelines even though I'm the victim here. Someone, please notice me. If I'm left in this condition, I'll catch a cold. This is a strong brotherly relationship I said, trying to express my impressions on the drama. STFU, fking servant. I'll be sure to fire you. Get the hell out now. Oh man. He's really pissed. Even though I have been trying to ignore what this cocky brat is saying. Damn. I'm really annoyed. Could this be menopause? Even my puberty hasn't even started. Ma. Alan Sama, that's some preposterous thing you have just said. The person to decide whether I get to stay is the Okusama. I don't think Alan Sama has that kind of authority. The soup paranoid me, moved my hands over to my mouth, with my little pinky sticking out, as I laughed. Oh oh ho ho, 
I could picture myself being the evil mother-in-law in those afternoon soap dramas. A. Eh? What? He was staring straight at me while his face turned red. Puppy love, I'm such a sinner. You. Why are you being so cheeky? Let's have a match. A duel. I'll make sure to beat you till you're blue and black all over and willingly say you give up. Looks like I was mistaken. His face turned red because of anger. What a short-tempered shitty brat. Alan. She's a girl. Kane Boucharmer frantically tried to stop Alan. But somehow it seems that he wasn't able to stop his younger brother that has lost control of himself. Kane Boucharmer, who was lost for words said something along the lines of you are too conceited earlier but it was swiftly dismissed. Kane Bouchama gazed at me sympathetically. I mean, him saying he wants a duel, even though he's only five years old, perhaps he is referring to car games? Is it the kind where you'll say duel stand by? As long your bum hits the ground, it would mean defeat. You understand? If you lose to me, you will scram and quit being a maid. You got it? When you said duel, you mean a real or loud brawl? Would there not be any duel standby? Duh, a no rules battle. Of course, magic is permitted. That is if you can use it. The shitty brat broadened his grin and laughed. I see, he's so full of himself because he has confidence in his magic. Incidentally, if I won, what would I gain? HMPH, there is no way you can win but... If that happens I would be your fellow henchman or whatever. I didn't ask for a henchman with such a terrible character though. The field for our duel would be here. This very room. Is that acceptable? Sure. Going all the way out would be troublesome anyways. By the way, when you were casting your magic earlier, Alan Sama, you had to say some language but if unable to say the incantation, I suppose the magic would not activate. You don't say. The shitty brat Alan replied as though it was so obvious. Is that so? I was merely curious at how you were able to remember such long lines at such a young age. Well then, I shall obey respectfully. I accept the duel. Good. Kane and Izama, please give the start signal. Kane Bouchama said I know with a glum expression and became the referee for our duel. And as for me, am I really fine? That was the kind of gaze he directed at me while he prayed that I do not get injured. He did say that if I gave up in the midst of the fight, attacks would be stopped immediately and that I can rest assured on that. It must be tough on the elder brother with such a difficult kid brother. Begin. The signal to start reverberated in the room. At that very same moment, I dashed towards where the shitty brat was. Although I said dash, for a five-year-old kid's leg strength, it was more like tottering. At any rate, the distance between us was roughly four meters. I closed the gap with the shitty brat that was muttering his incantations. As I ran forth, I undid the knot on my soaked apron and aimed it at Talon's face. The shitty brat that was in the middle of chanting, started to go out of breath and made puffing noises like hey how a youth that swimming would make. The moist apron successfully clung onto his face, preventing him from breathing. Using this opportunity, I got behind him and swept his foot while pushing him on his shoulder, causing him to fall on his backside. A disappointingly easy match to have had a duel in this enclosed area. Furthermore magic was something he had to absolutely use. What a foolish five years old. There's bound to be weak points for things that are convenient and awesome. You have to bear in mind your own weaknesses, Shan. The shitty brat Alan that had his head wrapped around by my wet apron looked up at towards me, dumbfounded. Well then, could this henchman Alan Sama, this being an immediate order, clean up my clothes and hair? I took on an imposing stance while looking down on him, and dished out a simple command. May Dark Six what comes after the duel? After the duel, Alan became incredibly meek. From his face, you could see the reluctance and dissatisfaction. But as my henchman, he has to obey the orders I gave him. I had expected Alan to start his wawa crying after the duel and tattle on me to his mama that I had been bullying him because of the following reasons. He is only five years old, he is Alan, and that he is a shitty brat. Surprisingly, that didn't happen and instead, he kept his promise and reluctantly accepted that he was my henchman. For a five-year-old kid, He's a rather steadfast shitty brat. Stella was both astonished and gratuitous at how I managed to safely get the shitty brat and cane bout charmer to recognize me as their maid. 
it seems that among the servants, there has been tension and discomfort on the question of who is the next personal servant to the Bouchimas. The other servants were all full of praises for me. By no means had I gone around boasting on how I dueled the young masters or how I made one of them my henchman too. Not one word. That's cause our relationship has to be kept a secret. It's not like the shitty brat would want to tell anybody that he lost to a girl. Similarly, Irene San and Claude San weren't told as well. Or perhaps I should say, they never did reappear after the very first day. Claude San claimed that he had a lot of work piled up that required his attention so he secluded himself in his room and endeavored to complete his work. Irene San being herself, was now, extremely busy due to the lack of mages and was hardly back at home in the first place. Even at dinner time, all the members of the family did not turn up. The only people at the large dining table were the shitty brat and cane bout charmer, where they ate in silence usually. Being their maid, I did not join in to have dinner together with them, but I still had to assist them in their meals. The job mainly consists wiping the dirt off cane bout charmer's mouth, bringing the cutlery from a distant place for him, refilling his drink. Oi, why are you helping cane and eyes armor only? The shitty brat started whining as he stamped his foot incessantly. The food is extravagant. The food, which were most my first time seeing, would make me drool. Still, from my experience with their dinners, it's always a miserable sight. Looking at the meat in silence makes my heart ache. In this residence, the people in charge of managing affairs in their territory are the Dana Sama, Claude San and Irene San's father, Irene San, her husband. However, the Dana Sama and Irene's husband were summoned to the capital and were made to handle some work. Two years have already passed since then. For your information, FYI, the wife of the Dana Sama has already passed away. Claude San was initially hitting it out on his own, living in a separate residence while making a name for himself in commerce but due to her sister begging him in tears. He has now returned and is helping out with some management issues too. Moreover, the matter that Aaron San was responsible for, in short, was the problem of the dwindling numbers of Rainforest Earl family's mages. The current situation was that the mages were leaving in the droves. For what kind of work the mages are leaving for, I have no idea. I wonder if the reason is similar to why the two mages visited the Garigari village. Could the other mages be patrolling around the places? This was what I heard from the home tutor during the history lesson that I had together with the Bouchimas. So basically, all this means that the Rainforest family is the best. Rainforest family bans I. No no, it is my honor to have become the home tutor for the Rainforest family, Bouchimas. Let's hope all goes well Jahahi. This was the kind of boot-licking shabby teacher he was and even as he might be boot-licking them now, at least he teaches history in an easy-to-understand way. TN, this paragraph was rather confusing, I tried my best in interpreting it and this was the result. At any rate, in these two years, their father and mother were hardly around, thus for both Kane Bout Charmer and the shitty brat Allen, from the time they became aware of their surroundings, they've been living without their parents. It seems likely that their closeness stems from this kind of family background. Honestly, this is so similar to my previous life. I had persevered, tried to obtain first for everything, gained as many hobbies as I could. In the case of the shitty brat Allen, I must have had taken notice at how he behaved. My first impression of him was that of annoyance, but it may be it is because I saw my old self in him. In the short period before the arithmetic tutor comes in, I consolidated my thoughts and decided to give it my all in treating him as nicely as possible, and shot to angel-like gaze that emitted gentleness and warmth right at the shitty brat Allen. Live strong, Shan. W. What are you looking at? Stop staring at me with eyes of a dead frog. If you are going to ask me to buy some milk, it's not possible since there isn't enough time. Oi, how dare you compare my angel-like gaze to a dead frog. Rude. And what he said at the end, isn't he suggesting that I'm constantly making him do errands? How is it possible for me, as their companion, to order him? Furthermore he is an aristocrat, to frequently go on errands. I made him run my errands once or twice only. Staring in his direction with my eyebrows furrowed, as though a snake is stalking the frog, 
the shitty brat instinctively became afraid and averted his eyes away from mine. Whoopsie daisies, that's not what I should be doing. I'm supposed to be their companion. Oh oh ho ho. Just at this moment, the arithmetic teacher came and we started to focus on the lesson. And I haven't forgotten how he compared my angel gaze to a dead frog. Damn shitty brat. Not gonna give a damn about you now. May Dark Seven came about Charmer's feelings. Ha! Shouted the shitty brat in his lively voice which resounded across the open field nearby. Kane Bout Charmer and I were watching over the sword play between Alan and the knight teacher who was coaching him in swordsmanship. For the Alan who had lost to me, he must be in agony I suppose, so he had started to buck up and began swordsmanship training. Kane had already learned swordsmanship so it had been decided that Alan would be personally coached. Given that I had practiced kendo in my past life, from what I can see, Alan has a considerable talent in swordsmanship, he hasn't gotten used to it and that he only has a body of a five-year-old, yet he is able to execute all these movements well, it is a level that is not expected of a five-year-old, and he hasn't mastered his basics too, from the perspective of Kane Bout Charmer, who had undergone the same sword practice, he seemed to be very satisfied with his performance as he nodded in approval, from how I see it, Kane Bout Charmer is the genius in swordsmanship, he was able to match the knight teacher's ability in no time, Alan is incredible, he is already able to wield magic, when his swordsmanship improves, the curtain for my exit would surely descend, despite being all that satisfied earlier, he was now casting his eyes down and muttering softly, not at all, from how I see it, there is no mistake that Kane Sama is the real genius in swordsmanship, you have good memory, a handsome looking face and a good personality to boot in the future. Women would be queuing by the miles to court you. Yep. No mistake on that. However my attempt at encouraging him had the opposite effect as he appeared to be even more dejected. Nor, since Salon is a mage, I'm sure he would be the one that would have a bevy of beauties after him. Well, as for me, since I'm not a mage, in fact, Finding a lady mage would be the more daunting task considering that there hasn't been any female mage around my age under the jurisdiction of the rainforest family. Ah, is that so? Dang. In this world, it seems that the ability to use magic holds the absolute authority. Sorry for the irresponsible encouragement. Still, if I apologized, he would feel even more hurt. I wanna know how to handle a delicate eight-year-old. Still. I have been thinking that maybe a lifestyle like Ojasama would be a good too. Claude Sama's way of life? You mean you aspire to be a merchant? Nope. I plan to be a knight. Only after distinguishing oneself can one be a knight but I can receive the quasi-aristocrat title of knight early easily though. Well, it is actually just an honorary title. Having the title of knight earl, I would be able to assist Talon. In addition, if I meet a nice lady mage that I like. It wouldn't be bad at all to marry her. Well, Claude Ojizama hasn't even found a suitable spouse though. Oh, I'm relieved. Before I said anything, this was what naturally popped up in my mind. I threw out a stock response instead. Indeed. A good Anasama. <laughs> Let me see. It is really wonderful I think. Even under your circumstances, you would prioritize the shitty brat. Oh pardon me, Alan Sami. Above all. Yep. His family after all. Speaking of family, it would be wonderful if that shitty brat, oh pardon me, is able to demonstrate love for someone. Kane Bout Charmer giggled at how I constantly let slip of the term shitty brat. In addition, when I was born, everyone in my family were mostly disappointed that I wasn't a mage so I kinda felt guilty about it. After that, Alan was born and everybody was relieved that he was a mage. Honestly, for this world, I cannot imagine the kind of emotional baggage non-mage children of aristocrats would carry with them. It would definitely be tough on them I think. At the Garagari village, being told that I could be a mage, I had my hopes up. When it was crushed later, it became painful as I was unable to return the expectations placed on me. I felt ashamed and couldn't do anything about it. Wasn't my feelings the same as his back then? Came about Charmer who has been continuously carrying such feelings since he was born, had grown to be such a fantastic and kind vicoman. It's really incredible. As for me, after being sold, 
my heart grew cold and apathetic, even though I have been calling that innocent five-year-old a shitty brat instinctively, showing how stormy my heart is. As expected, I can't hide conceal anything from you just by looking at my face. It feels as though you can see through everything, said Kane Bouchama as he coyly scratched his head displaying his bashfulness after I threw a respectful gaze over him. It's not like I happened to have a see-through cheat prepared, Kane Bouchama. Actually, it's not always purely liking him, it was a more of a dramatic torment for me, and there was this once when I really hated my brother. But Alan being Alan had to face lots of pressure and it seems rough on him. Furthermore, he is very clumsy in expressing his feelings, and Otisama and Okaasama are always not around in this period. So he has to rely on me. I feel that I have to protect him. He's my cute little brother after all, said Kane Bouchama who was calmly smiling. Seeing his smile, a fleeting memory of my brother's smile appeared at the back of my mind. The image is rather hazy. These brothers are doing fine. I wonder if the villagers at Garagari village are properly tending to their fields. You? What's up? Ah, sorry. It's nothing. That story of yours was too touching. Eh, I was flooded with thoughts about it. Alan is really a lucky person to have Kane Bouchama as his brother. You fu fu. I said and laughed to dodge the question. Right about now, the shitty brat Alan's coaching had ended. Kane Sama nimbly went over to Alan's place and praised him for doing so well, saying something like he is still no match for Kane Bouchama. The shitty brat smiled while not appearing to be all that annoyed. By the way, Anisama seemed like he was in a conversation with you earlier, what was it about? Alan probed with an innocent smile befitting of a five-year-old kid. Hey, don't throw that troublesome smile at me, TN, came to you, that is a face that says what shall I do? Well, since I heard a good story from you, in return, I shall help you this time. It was an adult conversation that is too early for someone as young as you to listen to. More importantly, Today I want to visit the town so, could you help me get the preparations ready? W what? An adult conversation. Aren't you and I the same age? And to directly give me an order to Alan Sama. The boss has to obviously give his henchman orders, and it is of course part of the natural hierarchy for the henchman to listen to the boss. I knew that the night teacher had already left, and after confirming that there weren't any adults in the vicinity, I took the opportunity to teach him about hierarchy. GRR. One day I would be able to argue you into silence. Mew. With his parting remark, Alan went back into the residence to look for the other servants. To leave the place, he would need to prepare bodyguards. Amu, please work hard to accomplish the task I present to you, henchman. May Dark Hate to the Town's Market. Part 1. It was decided that the shitty brat Alan, Kane Bouchama and I would visit the town. It's a journey on the coach. It wasn't a wagon-like carriage like the one I was on with Claude San. This one had proper seats for humans. Two people who had the appearance of knights accompanied us as bodyguards. I peeped outside the coach to have a look at the scenery, and amidst the tranquil rural landscape, I caught sight of a bunch of people lazing near the bushes. I had asked the knight that was sitting next to me what was it about and he told me that those people were farmers. The Thousand Teeth Thresher had been popularized in this area and the threshing process has been made remarkably easier so more peasants have nothing on their hands to do. They had finished their field work, and their next step would be to wait for the mages to force the crops to grow. However, due to the shortage of mages, the problem of waiting time was created. Staring at their blank unthinking faces, somehow, I remembered that they can raise livestock in their farms too. Speaking of which, all the crops in the farmland here, requires mages to grow them? Yes it appears, because this village is under the jurisdiction of the aristocrat. This is a village controlled by the aristocrats. Oh, what a culture shock. Which reminds me, if I had been a mage, the Gergari village would become under direct control over the aristocrat. So this is why the villagers at Gergari were so excited. I see, so this is it. If the mages help grow the crops all the time, the villagers wouldn't have to fret about crop failures and don't have to care about the weather too. Won't it make their jobs too simple? For the people of the village, 
it would surely be an utopia. Oh yeah, Udono originated from one of the new rural settlements. Rural settlements? Is that for real, Mu? You came from such a primitive place? On hearing our conversation, Alan triumphantly joined in the discussion. It is likely he noticed that it was a perfect topic for dissing me. And thus, attempted to join in the discussion. This repulsive little brat. When I had first seen magic accelerating the growth of crops, it came as a shocker to me. I'm so envious that it's so common in this village area. I had ignored Alan and continued my conversation with the escort knight. This infuriated Alan and he stood up from his seat to confront me but was sharply told off by Kane Bout Charmer. Decades ago, these rural settlements didn't exist though. The problem of lack of mages became more acute and it became increasingly difficult to appoint mages to all the rural lands, resulting in an extreme dip in crop production rates. Thus, we had to explore new options that could be sustained without mages. This is where the new rural settlements came in useful. So, all this boils down to the lack of agricultural development. When I had saw the prowess of magic, I had already considered this was why agricultural was so laid back here. After giving a cold glance to the Allen that was flaring up, I took another look outside and noticed the town. Earlier, all I saw was the quiet rural landscape but as we approached the town, I could now hear the bustling noises of the town. Looks like a lively town. Where did you want to go, you? I wanted to see the market. As I came down from the coach, Kane Bouchama received my hand to escort me down. No way, such a kind Vikerman. A pity he's only a child. If he was any bigger, I might have fallen head over heels for him. Nevertheless, no matter how much of an Ikerman he is, there is no way that I, with the memories of my past life preserved, would find him my cup of tea. Is there anything you need from the market? For now, I don't really need anything specific. All I want is to check out what is sold in the market. I see if it's the market we will be there soon, replied Kane Bouchama as he pointed in direction we should be going to the escort night. It really didn't take long before we reached the entrance for the market. The place was cramped with stalls, and they sold things like vegetables, meat, accessories and many others that caught my eye. It was as boisterous as a matchuri. Basically, it gave off the feel of a regular market from my previous life. Everything ranging from fruits and vegetables to meat and fish was sold here. One difference though, typical of a fantasy world, armor and sword combat equipments were sold as well. Particularly startling was that there were many pharmacies here too. Medicine-like dried medical herbs and cream-like medical cream were sold in the pharmacies. I hardly had any image of medicine being sold in this market. Furthermore, there was an abundance of the variety of medicine types too. Rummaging through the assortment, I came across dried yamogi. No way. How nostalgic. I had frequently used it back at Garagari village. Yamogi smells good and has the smell of Japan. I want to make some herb mochi. As I was thinking about that, Kane Bouchama went on ahead to buy me a bag of it. This is a secret, he said, as he made brought his index finger to his mouth. Tn, shh, comma this eight-year-old Ikerman is truly amazing, and his perfectness is likely to get worse from now on too. Just so you know, I'm a servant. If you actually treated other servants like that, they wouldn't have the heart of a servant. In a way, the future batches of servants would have a harder time with his Ikerman style compared to Alan's shitty brat style. Everybody would be despairing that they cannot be of any use to him. I continued window shopping until it became somewhat dark and we decided to go back. Together with the darkening skies, the people in the market began carrying lanterns to illuminate their surroundings. Click click I heard the sounds of striking flint so that's probably how they start the fires in their lanterns. The vanguard escort knights similarly illuminated our paths. We walked on. The soft flickering glow of orange created a dreamlike atmosphere in the market. Shortly after, we reached the entrance of the town. Yet the coach that we rode on was nowhere to be seen. One of the escort knights said he would bring along the coach and left in an composed manner. So the coach was probably parked somewhere else. We obediently waited. We walked quite a fair bit so my legs started to hurt. I'm exhausted, however, a child near where we were, 
was pacing himself back and forth before a huge tree, picking up ears to listen. I heard something about a copper coin, medicine, and about snakes mixed with his weeping cries. This smells of nuisance, honestly. I'm quite tired but if I were to leave while ignoring this child, I would be bothered by it later. Just when I decided to approach the kid, Alan called out to him. Hey you, what you doing? The self-important Alan makes his grand entrance. Even though we might be calling the kid a kid, he looks older than Alan. Despite so, from the atmosphere, it didn't feel that way. That is the shitty brat Alan for you. I came to buy Okar Sans medicine and my copper coin has fallen inside the cavity near the tree. Can't you just put your hand in and search for the coin? But... There seem to be snakes inhabiting this hole judging from the hissing sound, and I'm afraid. I tried poking inside with twigs, however. The inside of the hole is surprisingly complex and I couldn't dig out the coin nor could I chase the snakes away. At this rate, I won't be able to buy Okar Sans medicine. Alan was conversing with the kid so we stood behind behind him. Abruptly, the escort knight that was behind me started wailing in a frenzy. Snakey, where? Where is the snake? Alan Sama, Kane Sama, get back. Snake, snake, it's here. Next, the hysterical knight grabbed them, who were complaining and lamenting, forcefully to a nearby, or more like, as far away as possible from the tree. Oi, what is it? Ouch. Dot you hate snakes? The knight made no response to Alan's question but you could see the fear in his eyes, eyes that clearly showed that he was scared of the snake-infested hole. Thus, there was no doubt he hated snakes. I borrowed the lantern from the chicken knight, and twigs from the child and then tried poking the hole with the twigs. Exactly as the child had mentioned, the hole was a complicated one. Using an upright stick, I still couldn't reach the end of the hole nor could I turn over the copper coin and bring it out. Placing the lantern near the hole, I took a peep inside the hole while moving the twig about the hole. Upon doing so, sounds of hissing can be heard and next, I could see something glaring at me. Make no mistake, there are snakes inside. May Dark Nine to the Town's Market, Part 2. It's here, the snake. Kaya, a hoarse shriek could be heard. I can't be sure if what he did was for the sake of Alan and Kane about Chama or to protect himself when the frightened knight dash off carrying both of them. Only after a distance did he stop running while hugging them with his burly arms. This knight shows no sign of being useful at all. Using the emoji that I had bought earlier, I squished and lumped them together in a ball so that holding it becomes easier. After collecting two long twigs, I use the twigs to pierce into the lump of emojis and set them alight with the flame from the lantern, ascertaining that the lumps have caught fire, I pulled them out of the flame and lightly swung the twigs, thus extinguishing the fire on them, making it such that it gave off smoke only, next I inserted the smoking lumps inside the hole, this was a tactic to smoke the snakes out, besides, Yamogi could be used like this since the smoke from it repels the snakes, large amount of smoke billowed out and immediately, the effects could be seen. Two snakes slithered out from their holes. I had assumed that there was only one snake but looked like there was actually two. A married couple perhaps. Soon after, another manly shriek could be heard from the escort knight. But hey, the snakes wasn't even heading in his direction. The snakes slithered towards the bushes behind a big tree, temporarily pulling the emoji out. I once again thrust the twig in to make sure there wasn't any more snakes inside and from what I could see, it should be alright now. However, I can't be 100% sure. Are the snakes totally driven out? Tn, said Kane about Chama, I think. The chicken knight made his way back discreetly and so, Alan and Kane about Chama finally came along. I am not certain but it is very likely that the snakes have left their hole. I had expected only one snake but two appeared and it shocked me for a moment. Still I doubt there would be another one, I suppose. Saying that, I resolved myself to put my hand inside the snake's hole and found an object that feels like a copper coin. I'm so glad that the coin was at a place where my hands could reach. Also, there weren't any more snakes in the hole. Here you go. Hold on tight to it K. Okay? I passed over the copper coin to the kid that had dropped it. The kid repeatedly expressed his gratitude to me. And in order to stop him, I told him that I had to make my way to the pharmacy before it closes. 
he panicked and gave his final thanks before running off towards the market. He was so desperate for the sake of his mum, and almost cried too. Oi, you, what are you doing? Alan grabbed my shoulders and yelled menacingly at me without warning. Huh. All I did was return the kid's copper coin. I already saw that. That's not what I was referring to. Alan started raging all of a sudden. Frankly, I don't understand why. My usual guess is that he has a short temper and his fuse got triggered. This time, however, I have no clue. It was as though a question mark popped above my head. With good timing, the coach arrived and one of the bodyguard knight returned. Anything happened? He alternated his eyes between his cowering co-worker and the Alan that was angrily staring at me. Kane Bout Charmer broke the silence. Ha, ah, some stuff happened but, it's okay now. Let's go back. Kane Bout Charmer walked back to the coach and seeing as he did so, Alan clicked his tongue and followed behind, tilting my head in confusion. I followed them back to the coach. The atmosphere in the coach was utterly cold dreadfully gloomy. Apart from the pale-faced knight who had earlier exposed his pathetic self, even Kane Bout Charmer seemed to be angry at me too. I scanned through my memories of the snake incident to see what might have enraged both of them but still didn't manage to understand anything. Mew, you have no idea why Alan and I are mad at you? Kane Bout Charmer muttered faintly. Alan rages at me as regularly as the number of meals I have but this time, Kane Bout Charmer was mad at me too. This is a first I believe. I'm sorry for angering you. I have absolutely no clue how I made you guys livid at me. Kane Bout Charmer is actually angry too right? Of course. Dot Mew has to really take care of herself more carefully. Of myself? Did I hear that right? You said it herself right? Specifically that you were not certain. So this means that there was a possibility that there might still be snakes in there. Am I not wrong? Despite that. You examined the whole personally with your hands without any hint of hesitation. Alan and I were shocked. Summing it up, what do you actually mean? Considering what happened in the end, there weren't any snakes in there, and I managed to pick up the copper coin, so there shouldn't be any problems. Why would you all be crossed at me? Your face says that you still don't get it. Huh? Kane Bout Charmer laughed scornfully. To think that Kane Bout Charmer would laugh at me like that. The attack power of Kane Bout Charmer sneering at me was too high. Basically, Alan, and of course, including myself had been worried for you. We were upset that you acted without any regards to your safety. If there had been a snake, what would happen? The snakes could be poisonous and in the worst case scenario, you might get bitten and would die. Worried? I made them worried and angered them because of that. Sitting next to Kane Bout Charmer was Alan who was gazing outside awkwardly while in a bad mood. In fact, you hasn't been prioritizing your own health on many other occasions. It was so when you accepted Alan's duel. I shall repeat myself. I want you to cherish yourself more. I could only say sorry, reply that I understood and that I'll pay more attention in the future. From then on. I was lost for words throughout the journey on the coach. I had been chided by an eight-year-old boy. Still, this feeling doesn't feel bad at all. I tried to reel in on my memories to see if there had been anyone that got mad at me because he or she was worried for me but no one came to mind. I don't usually involve myself in exceedingly dangerous incidents in the past though. Anyways, it seems that recently, I feel like I have gotten reckless. Nevertheless, I actually made these little kids concerned for me. Recalling the angry faces of Alan and Kane, I can't help but feel a sense of warmth, a warmth that cannot be swallowed no matter how hard I try to force it down my throat. It remained trapped in my chest. I can't really find the words to describe this accurately though. I never expected that I, as a maid, would vow in my heart to take care of them bravely. However, even more strangely, for their sake and not only because I'm their maid, I would push to my very limits for them. May Dark Ten The Madams Made Part 1 I who had secretly made my determination to give my all for the brothers of the Rainforest family, am now wrestling with the problem that I had feared up till now. It was a battle to increase family time. I hypothesize that Alan's bad temper is completely the fault of his mom for not doing her role as a mom sufficiently. Furthermore, Irene San has always been so busy that she cannot afford to spend time eating meals together with her children. What is going on? Something in her schedule has got to be redundant, something out there. Is it really compulsory? 
Something should fit this description in alignment with my bookkeeping job. I wanted to know Irene Sand's schedule, finding out what her one day worth of work is like. Hence, I went to look for Stella San, who was her personal attendant. Work hasn't started for the day, so she should be at the servant's waiting room currently. It seems that I had arrived before dawn, and nobody had arrived at the waiting room as of yet. Too early I suppose. Still, Stella San is always early and it's high time that she appears now. While I was holding this thought, the door opened violently and there, Stella San, stood with an intense expression on her face. I can detect killing intent from her. What had happened? Stella San looked at me and, oh it's you. Are you the only one that got out of bed? This can't be helped. Since we don't have much time left, I shall have to bring you along, she said as she grabbed my arm, dragging me along despite my lack of consent. W what has occurred? One of Okusama's maid has fainted. I'm bringing you to her as a replacement. You might be young, but there has been talk about you being able to perform well. So I am expecting good results from you. Ta 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 we walked at a beastly pace. Could Stella San be a race walking athlete? Trying my best not to fall over, I had to switch to a jog to keep up. In other words, I have to be Okusama's maid today? Indeed. What luck. I didn't even have to ask Stella San and I would get to directly observe Irene San's work life. I made a guts pose in my mind. After tossing several objects out to make space for me in the coach, I took a seat together with Stella San. At the front seat was Irene San who was drooling in her slumber. Be quiet, you. Else we would awaken Okusama. Okusama can only sleep during the traveling time you see. The Irene San I am seeing now was somehow, much more worn out than when I last saw her and that she even had dark circles under her eyes. Sleeping in between traveling time? Sounds like the average salary man on the crowded train. Is this what it is like for most aristocrats? My image of their elegance crumbled. Anyways, as I was saying, I am going to thoroughly research on the work life of Irene, from the famous Rainforest Earl family. The morning for a mage aristocrat is early. Even before daybreak, the coach is already swaying, proceeding towards the slightly far off farmlands. Next, using magic, she started to fill water into the stone water reservoirs. She added water to the stone water reservoirs that surrounded the coach within a wide radius. Of course. During her time in the coach, it was her all-important sleep time. Not a single second was wasted. The next job was regarding the construction and maintenance of buildings. Holding the stones that were prepared beforehand, she started to chant magic. In the twinkle of an eye, the rock fused, broke apart, underwent a change in shape and became the building blocks in the construction of a new building. Too awesome. When she was using magic, she opened up her glittering eyes that were closed earlier. Her bloodshot eyes were frightening. Next was to harvest and transport raw cotton to the storehouse. Madame held onto a clump of cotton and began her chants. As soon as she did so, the cotton spun itself into threads. Stella San and I held onto the spool of thread and using it as the core, we wound up the cotton thread that was made by magic. Seems likely that I was called over to help out in this. This is a boring and tedious work, and it took quite some time to finish. Despite our efforts though, the storehouse contained barely any cotton wool and we already had to make our way to the next workplace. Maintenance of buildings, production of swords, armors and other equipment, production of glass products, etc., etc. What a secondary industry. From this we can see that mages are a complex version of a factory. Next, Irene San returned to the residence late at night. Mage is simply a term for an employee working in a black business. In order to have a late night meal, Irene San went to the dining room. The job of cooking the meal was delegated over to the servant that was on duty, while Stella San and I made preparations for her bath. Stella Sama, I am amazed. That Irene Sama had to do all that. I never once thought that the aristocratic mages would be treated as a factory. From my innermost depths, I was surprised for I had willfully imagined that aristocrats would be visiting salons, and if they were mages, they would be in charge of eradicating magic beasts. Yes, originally the role of assisting the villagers was divided between the mages of the rainforest family but ever since a number of people followed Danisama to the capital, 
there was a shortage of mages in our domain. Still, Okusama has earned her resolve to work hard in these two years, since these jobs all require the indispensable help of mages. Stella-san said as she wept you. Even the expressionless beauty is shedding tears. However, Stella-san, hold it right there. I don't think that there are any jobs that only mages can do. Couldn't these jobs be done given some time and effort? As I was scrubbing the stone bathtub, I had a thought spontaneously. By the way, Stella Sama. Right now, the bathtub is empty, so how are we going to go about preparing the bath? Stella San turned towards the medicinal herbs specially used for baths and replied while giving her isn't this obvious? Face. Of course. The Okusama always adds them to her baths. I instinctively looked up at the sky. May Dark Eleven The Madam's Maid Part 2. Ma. Mew. Is this a technique which farmers employ to combat fatigue? This feels awfully good. Currently, I'm using an effective method to remove tiredness and I am now giving Irene San, who is submerged in the bathtub, an eye massage. This is called a massage. Using the hands to massage, blood circulation can be improved and stiff muscles can be loosened up with this skill. When Okusama was using magic, your eyes were scar, cough cough. Excuse me. I mean your eyes were overused so. I thought that your eyes might be tired and with all due respect, I have been impolite in my actions. Are you experiencing any discomfort? No, it is very good. Please continue on like this. Being given Irene San's approval, I continued up to the head massage before today's bath ended. Together with Stella San, we wiped Irene San's body with cloth. I'm still a midget, thus, I was responsible for her lower half body. Anyways, it was unbelievable that her body was one which had already conceived two kids. In addition, despite being naked and being wiped by cloth, Irene San was unperturbed, as expected of her. I had thought of her as a complex version of a factory but, Irene San had behaved as though it was natural for her to be waited upon. She is a proper aristocrat Samaha. Lastly, while we put on her neglected clothes for her, the Irene San that had kept up her silence till now said, make you my assistant for tomorrow, and went back to her restroom in a spirited mood. Without my response, Stella San replied with understood and followed Irene San. I hurriedly followed behind but Stella San told me to rest up as tomorrow would be an early day so, I bowed and saw them off, and then, for the next few days, I helped out the madam and could oversee her schedule but nothing much had changed in her daily routine. Still, there were some minor changes in what was being produced. Every single day, as a factory, she produced all sorts of objects splendidly. The most time-consuming and difficult task for them all was the cotton yarn winding. No matter how we hurry, we could only come up with a small amount of yarn and, it wasn't as exciting as constructing a building. On the third day of attending Irene San, we encountered another mage for the first time. It was a middle-aged man with an unshaven face and he showed signs of exhaustion. His haggardness could be seen from his dark eye bags, rough skin and the paleness of his face. He was in an extremely bad condition. He appears to be a mage that primarily handles the growth of crops. I heard from Stella San that spirit users are good at growing crops, so they specialize in doing so. It seems that Madam can be considered a magician. Speaking of which, back in the past at Garagari village, the two mages that came also called themselves either a spirit user or magician. I wonder if this means they have different spheres of expertise. According to the fatigued man, thanks to the thousand teeth thresher, the villagers' speed of cultivating their lands had become faster and that the work in the rural areas had become busier. In addition, he discussed with Madame about the diminishing amount of spirits living in soil causing crops to not grow as he wished. Listening closely to his words, Madam said that it had to be done and that it wasn't a question of whether to do it or not. This was the kind of guiding principle that black businesses uphold themselves to and with it, all complaints are rejected. The worn out spirit user had a deeper look of death carved into his face after hearing that. Roughly one week has passed since I became Irene San's maid and as usual, she always said you will help me tomorrow again after I gave her a massage while she was in her bath. And as always, I thought Stella San would reply that she understood, but this time, she hesitated for a moment. Allow me to humbly say, Okusama, 
Actually, ever since you became Okusama's assistant, Alan Sama has been in a stormy mood. The other servants have been troubled by this too. Kane Sama said that if Mew was around, he would be able to behave better though. What should I do? Oh Alan, stop letting your hair down all the time because your boss isn't around. Your boss is ashamed of you. Later I have to re-educate you. Oh, about Alan. I see. Return to being my son's maid as per norm tomorrow. But you have to give me the massage at night. I cannot back off on that. I shall obey. Stella San and I said so in unison and bowed. My duty as madam's personal attendant has been concluded as of today. It was tough. I heard that the previous maid that served madam had collapsed, but it seems that she is now recovering. Seems like overwork. This black corporation is terrifying. I am still a child and for tasks that are physically demanding, I would receive help from Stella San. Even so, I am exhausted. Stella San is quite the superwoman. Impressive. Even though Stella San has assisted me, I am still tired from all that and there are still things that I want to do so Alan's behavior might have saved me there. Being Madam's attendant means that I had to accompany the busy Madam everywhere. Hence, there wasn't any time to do things that I want. Furthermore, because I hadn't been around, the proud Alan had behaved unacceptably, as the big boss, I have got to instill some discipline. Amu, tomorrow I have to properly work him hard. Let's do that. May Dark 12 back to being the Bouchima's maid. Early in the morning, I went out from the back door of the residence's bathroom, that could only be used by the masters, and saw, not far away, another female servant. She had a pail filled with water and was washing clothes, making the basha basha sound while doing so. A kind looking auntie with a good physique. She must be Mary. Mary Sama, are you doing the laundry here? Early, isn't it? R. Yeah. Morning. By the way, you can drop the Sharma with me. Aren't you early yourself? Yes, I am going to do make some preparations. And next, I went on with surveying the ground. There was gravel all around here. The size of the gravels were generally large, being roughly 5 centimeters in diameter. Just what I needed. After being satisfied with my surveying, I turned back face Mary and asked, Is Mary going to continue washing the laundry here? Why not do it at the washing area? If it was as per normal, most people would have done it at the place assigned for doing laundry. I usually go there to wash cane bout charmer and incidentally, Alan's clothes there. The washing area is meant for washing the master's clothes, you see. The clothes washed here are the servants' attires. We use the bath water that's left after Rokusama is done with her bath. It contains so ap nuts so using it makes it easier to wash off dirt. Ah. So that's so apanuts. It's the herb that Stella San always carries around her. I've always noticed that the madam's bathtub is empty the day after she used it. So this was what happened. It was fully utilized by the servants to wash their clothes. Great for ecology. Mary San, thank you for your constant guidance. It's all right. You don't have to thank me for everything. Considering that ever since you came, the number of dirty clothes Alan Bouchama usually racks up has decreased making my work easier, though it has increased again as of late. Damn shitty brat. Sorry, from today, I will return to being the bout charmer's maid and I would make sure to instruct him carefully to prevent it. Ahaha, are you seriously saying that? You don't seem like a child at all. Young yet dependable. Well, my mental age is indeed around your level. If I continued to stay and chat with Mary San, I would likely be a hindrance to her work so I decided to cut off the conversation at an appropriate timing and hastily went on with my preparations. I made sure to inform Mary San that I would be doing some work here, and of course I gained Stella San's approval beforehand so please do not be bothered by my presence. First and foremost, I pushed the gravel with my feet around a former circle with one meter in diameter, after which, I piled some big rocks and firewood in the circle. This sounds quite simple but it took a significant amount of time, compounded by the fact that I only have a physical body of a five-year-old. Doing anything at all would easily make me tired, and my movement is sluggish too. Moving these heavy objects was tough. I took a short break and realized that the young masters should be waking up any time soon. I quickly dusted my attire and went to their room. Knock. Knock. Good morning, Kane Sama. May I enter? No replies came from inside the room. They were probably still asleep. 
I was taken aback as I didn't expect Kane Bouchama to be the type to oversleep. Saying excuse me, I entered the room. There were bulges on the canopy bed. As I thought so, they were still in La La Land. The curtains shielded the room from the morning sun, cladding the room in darkness. For starters, let's flood the room with sunlight. I drew open the curtains. The room was bathed in sunlight in one go. Even though the radiance struck above their eyelids, all that could be heard from the bed was their monotone Yuan cries. I stood by the side of the bed and greeted morning, and Kane bout Charma and Alan replied Yuan again while snuck underneath their covers. Yet again, Alan had crawled into Kane bout Charma's bed. This happens regularly. Perhaps he feels lonely. Well, he is a five-year-old. I was sincerely sorry to interrupt their good night's sleep but, I hardened my heart and flipped their covers over. The Bouchamas were wearing their bathrobe like pajamas, which was creased and wrinkled, after sleeping on their bed, for now. Since they are children it is acceptable but, to continue sleeping on the same bed after they grow older, people might get the wrong idea. It is morning already. Breakfast has been prepared. Please wake up. I pressed on. The first reaction came from Alan. Un, he laid down on the bed before lifting his face and as he met my eyes, something twinkled in his eyes. He started shouting, It's you. And jumped to his feet, unexpectedly. He was extremely excited and I too, was startled at his enthusiasm. I had imagined him to shout that my pain in the butt, boss, is finally came back and make a disgusted face. Mew Kane Bouchama had been awoken by Alan's shouting and while rubbing his drowsy face, he slowly rose. Kane Bouchama probably has low blood pressure. Morning was when he looked sheepish. It's really you. Morning, said Kane Bouchama as he sweetly smiled, an amazing angelic smile. His sheepish half-asleep look was good. I archived his smiling face into my mind's folder. What, Mew? I was told that Okaasama found you useless ultimately, and so you came back huh? Alan was extremely delighted. I see, I see. Damn Alan. He had wanted to spout his nonsense to me all this. What a reliable brat. Initially, I had thought that he was such a cute henchman, but now I have to return the borrowed sense of warmth. So I heard a rumor about some henchman that had been behaving riotously while his boss wasn't around. Since there was no way to resolve this problem, I have returned. A. Someone is behaving riotously. You. Do you have any other henchman other than me? Alan's face looked as if he was greatly shocked. I'm talking about you. Mr. Alan. Please realize. Your boss is being sarcastic here. I don't have any other henchman. This means. Some other henchman out there. Is he from another faction? Could it be the brat from the adjacent town at Fatty Arms Coffin's place? No worries, Mew. That dude definitely has plump arms, a bulging belly and fat legs. There is no way he can oppose me, declared Alan braggingly. He puffed up his chest in pride and looked at me with his twinkling eyes, as expected of my henchman, reliable. Was what I wanted to say, but I won't say it anyways. What is this Fatty Arms Coffin? Who is it? There are other factions? This was my first time hearing about it. Don't count on me to join in the conflict. I sighed, and decided not to continue this topic. Beside Alan was Kane bout Charma cowering and shivering as he tried to restrain his laughter. Isn't it the job of the elder brother to prevent his little brother from going berserk? Kane bout Charma. Alan Sama, I have yet to hear anything about this fatty coffin san. More importantly, Breakfast has been prepared. Please allow me to assist in changing your clothes. Today you have sword practice. Hence, let's make do with a set that is easy to move in. Speedily, I selected the clothes from their closets and assisted in their change of clothes. We are all children, so for now, helping them change is okay but in the future, I feel it's best to search for a male servant to deal with this. It appears that Alan and Kane Bouchama felt somewhat awkward about it. I combed their hair and gave them a seal of approval on their heads that guaranteed that it is decided that today would be a perfect day before sending them off to the dining room. I retrieved their pajamas and informed the other servant to Nain, who was in charge of the room's management and tidiness, that the Bouchamas have woken up and they would proceed to have their breakfast. I then rushed off to the dining room myself. 
I have to help them in their meals or else. Dot somehow, rather than being the boss, oi a bun, I am more like the parent oi a. Well, I am their maid, so that's fine. May Dark 13 founding of the nation and assembling a spinning wheel. While observing Irene Sand's job scope, two thoughts came to mind. First was to build wells and the other was to make a spinning wheel. With wells, there will no longer be a need for mages to specially make a trip TP replenish water supplies and with a spinning wheel, it would be possible for anybody to spin thread by themselves. It's just that, for a water well, even building a prototype would be beyond my means and thus, I am going to prioritize first on the spinning wheel. However, the construction would have to wait after studying. I have less in time with the home tutor now. Today's lesson is history. This time, the lesson is on a rather old legend, during the period known as the Age of Mythology. Even though it is a legend, it seems that this country doesn't have a religion that seems like a religion. The story gave vibes similar to that of the Nihon Shoki or the myths about the Greek gods. It feels right. However, I can't shake off the feeling that the predicament this country is in stems from their ideology, their raison d'etre for establishing this new nation and their ambitions for it. These were mentioned at the last part of the legend of the founding of the Castell Nation. According to the narrative, the Castell Nation where we all reside in presently was a cunt rebuilt by the gods. During the age of mythology, magic could be casted without saying their incantations. As of such, mages were omnipotent and they got so carried away that they called themselves gods. The arrogant mages clustered together and lived together in their kingdom of gods, the great magic empire Pandora. In this era, their empire was the only absolute leader of the continent. The mages of that time were full of themselves. They were brutal and cold-hearted, turning the whole of the non-mage human population into slaves and toying around with them as though they were lesser beings even when compared to beasts. Nevertheless, the non-mage human soon discovered how to make iron, and could forge resilient swords, shields, armor, helmets and other equipment. The humans that were slaves, stealthily sharpened their fangs, and finally rose their flag of rebellion towards the mages. No matter how the prideful mages held the belief that the powerless humans shouldn't be able to achieve anything with their strength, their numbers were simply too great. Furthermore, their iron armor could some way or another withstand the magical attacks from the mages and that their swords, when skillfully swung on the mages, could also slice them into pieces. The war between the mages and the humans grew protracted, not long later, a group of mages brokering for peace for both sides appeared. This third faction would later become the gods that founded the Castell Nation. However, at that time, the super-conceited King of Magic of Pandora kicked their pleas for peace to one side, claiming that those who possess such feeble mindsets have no rights to be mages, and ended up with attacking this third faction of mages. Having said that, the humans too, couldn't accept the ideals of the third faction as they couldn't trust mages at all. It was around this period of time when the King of Magic died all of a sudden and a new ruler was crowned. This ruler was later given insulting nicknames such as Queen of Darkness, Queen of the Undead and the Ruler of the Rotting and Decaying, and was considered the evilest Queen of Magic. This Queen of Magic didn't give a damn to the appeals from the third faction and of course, ordered the advance of her troops to eliminate the humans. It was truly an intense battle. Among the mages under the Queen of Magic were her necromancers. They were rare mages who knew how to control the dead. Because the dead could rejoin her army, mages that were killed by the humans could be revived and on the other hand, humans that were slaughtered were revived as part of her army. Yet, this zombie army would mistakenly kill mages who were supposed to be their allies, thus, creating a bloodbath for both the humans and the mages. Most could only think about escaping from it. Unfazed by the deaths of her own allies, the Queen of Magic continued to steadily expand her domain. We can no longer stand this, was what the mages in the Third Force thought and cooperated. Eventually they managed to corner the Queen of Magic bringing a stop to her zombie army, and next, they vowed never to repeat history again and started their own country. Thus, the country known as Castell was born. The mages, in a bid for unity between humans and mages, swore never to tyrannize the humans and promised to give them a prosperous life. 
The humans were grateful to have been saved from the grasp of the Queen of Darkness and the Bloody War. Once again, humans revered mages as gods and agreed to build a new nation with them. The whole plan to have the mages grant riches to the humans while the humans' job was to worship them, gave birth to the current black organization. These mages slog away day and night for their sakes. It is a tragic sight. From what I have seen at Tyrene Sand's work, this legend could be a historical fact. Classroom learning has ended so the young masters are currently having sword practice. Apart from the laundry and other miscellaneous work, I decided to sit at the place where I laid out the stones and firewood in the morning and wrestle with the construction of the spinning wheel. Seems like Mary Sam had finished washing the clothes since wasn't there anymore. To start off, I took out a clump of cotton which I had obtained from Stella San, and confirmed the process of producing thread. It was likely to be similar to how cori can be made from tissues. It was probably twisted until it became a thread. I started twisting some cotton. It took some time but after some twisting, a thread-like thing was made. The more twists on the thread, the better it felt but, as expected, doing this manually took a lot of time. I want to make it easier to increase the number of rotations. Speaking of rotating, a spinning top. It is a toy targeted at small children in my previous life. It could with a single turn, revolve for many rounds. I searched for a twig near the area, and tried winding the thread on the twig but it looks like the weight of the twig, wasn't sufficient and I couldn't smoothly rotate around it. This time, I tried tying a rock under the twig and did it again, and rotating it felt great. Oh, as I was thinking, I continued pulling the cotton, rotating and did what you might call coiling around the twig, which in itself might be called spinning yarn. TN, not much explanation and description for this. Check out YouTube for yarn spinning to gain a better idea. P. Nevertheless, while this might be a feasible technique, the method which I had envisioned involves a spinning wheel and should have, you know, a wheel-like thing to spin cotton, most likely, if that was the case, in sync with the rotation of the wheel, the produced thread would be coiled around a rod, it would work as the wheel spun. In all honesty, I have only seen pictures of its schematics during a history lesson in school, hence, I might not be very sure but I think this should be how it works. If it comes down to the wheel-like object, I would require a kind of belt to propagate the rotation, that could be made with wood later, and would it involve shaving of wood? I would have to assemble some equipment but hey, that requires money and I don't get paid. Mew, so you were over here huh? What are you doing? When did Kane bout Charmer and Alan got so close? Ah, this is bad. I put too much concentrated at work and completely did not notice. Has it been a long time since they were here? Sorry about Charmer. Sword practice must have ended. We have to clean off the sweat don't we? I shall make preparations. I got up in a hurry to ready the bath but Kane bout Charmer stopped me, squatted down and looked at the spool of thread that I was holding. No, it is fine for now. By the way, what is that? This is called a spinning wheel. I am still thinking about making it and have been testing with some prototypes. What is a spinning wheel? Alan and Kane Bout Charmer's eyes were both fixated on the tool. It is a tool to spin thread from cotton. I thought about building one as far as I could with my own abilities but gathering the required tools for construction seems too difficult for me so I have been thinking about sending a drawn up blueprint to Claude Sama. He should be able to at least vaguely understand the blueprint, I wager so. Between building it all by myself and discussing it with Claude Sama, the latter approach would yield faster results I believe. While I'm at it, I could try to present another blueprint on Wells too. For writing materials such as pen and paper, they are easily obtainable from the lessons, therefore, the equipment needed is all there. I shall do that, that there existed such a tool. I didn't know that. What about the campfire-ish stones and firewood that you have piled here? Are they for the spinning wheel? Said Kane Bout Charmer as he pointed towards the set of stones and firewood that I assembled in the morning. No, that has nothing to do with the spinning wheel. That is for Okusama's bathtub. I am thinking of placing some heated stones into the water. There has been arrangements for the head chef to come here at night to set the stones on fire. Heated stones? Yes. Placing the heated stones in the water. The temperature of the water would increase and heating the water was the plan. 
Lyokusama has been using her bathtub every night but, she would always have to personally use magic to heat the water so, I thought if only we could prepare that on our side. Is that so? That would be good, said Kane Bauchama, beside Kane Bauchama who was smiling gently. There was a child that was acting in an awfully strange way ever since started talking about the madam. Of course, that was Alan. It was like, as though he heard something really amazing from me. Because he did that, it cannot be helped. I took a look at Alan, and he looked like he was about to utter something and that he was racking his brain for the right words. Dot dot you, Okar-san, is she in good health? Alan had at long last, squeezed out his thoughts and said in a feeble, e voice, while frantically putting on the guise of being uninterested in it, if were to talk about her health, it would be that she is healthy, however, she has been very busy with work, and has been in a constant state of fatigue. He h, i s c mumbled Mr. Allen, he seemed like he wanted to ask more questions yet he was unable to do so because he didn't what was good to say, nevertheless, she has been concerned about Alan Sama and Kane Sama. When Irene San got wind of the information from Stella San that Alan has been acting violently without his boss, she made a prompt decision to send me back. As I conveyed her concerns, Alan's expression became more cheerful immediately. Next, Alan realized that he became delighted unconsciously and knit his brows awkwardly and returned to his usual cheeky expression. Well, I couldn't care either way. It's all right without Okar San anyways he said pretending to be tough. His bluff was clear as day. There were no indications of him trying to hide his bluff. No wait, he might be trying to hide it but he was totally unable to conceal it. Or, what is this? Cute. So readable. Oh, oh, did he long for his mother that much? Just as I was about to grin reflexively, the cane bout charmer next to me was grinning. It felt like Kane Bauchama was also able to understand Alan's affection for his mum. What is wrong with both of you? Weird faces you're making. What is going on? Alan's face went all red and he started barking in his usual style. The grinning Kane Bauchama started patting on Alan's back to calm his agitation. If the spinning wheel is completed, there would surely be more time for Irie and San to have dinner together with them on normal occasions. The family time that Alan and Kane Bauchama deeply wanted. May Dark 14 brought to you by the The Nei Digest. TN, Nei means domestic affairs in this context. The author wrote the The Nei in English. Thus I am leaving it as it is. The heated stone bath was a total success and Irie and San gave high praises for it. The minerals from the stone started to seep into the bath, causing the water to naturally feel somewhat smooth. The job of the heated stone bath was later added to the daily routine, and I became responsible for the fetching of water and the filling of the bath tub, whereas another servant was in charge of chopping firewood and heating the stones. That is because it would be dangerous for children to handle fire. Nevertheless, my role of using a bucket to fetch water is crazy tough. Countless of round trip were needed and my muscles would be aching all over after doing so. However, I won't be lamenting about it. After all, this is the black organization. Also, I completed the blueprints for the spinning wheel and the well, and brought it to Claude San. He decided to postpone all his other work, in order to focus entirely on the blueprints. However, as for the well, it's a little... The feel wasn't right. Somehow, there appears to be contraptions resembling wells in this world, for a biggish city like the capital. There are various districts that have such wells. Just that, in the past, when they wanted to build the wells in the rainforest domain, the people would say, A, drawing water from a well is hev, Y, and it will take Tim, E, it is unreasonable for the weak and would hurt the wastes of the age too. It's impossible, impossible and similar other complaints. Back then, there was a sufficient number of mages, and they thought there should more than enough mages to handle this job, so they settled on using a bond method instead. No, when I heard about it, I was like seriously, R? I won't be generous with my words, can't you all at least draw water from the wells? But could that be because I'm narrow-minded? Could it be that my heart has already been tainted by the ways of the black organization? Is that it? Claude San suggested that with the lack of mages currently, 
there could be no other option but to rely on Wells to deal with the problem. Thus, I desperately hid the black view in my mind and replied that I would try my best to come up with an improvement for the blueprint, something like allowing water to be drawn while hardly requiring any strength, and took back the blueprint from Claude San. Okay. Later on, I presented to Claude San a pump system that can replace and improve the pulley mechanism for drawing water. I drew insights from a piston made for a squirt gun during a primary school science lesson to design the pump system. A kind of vacuum state would be present inside the well when it is filled with water. If a pipe is installed and pressure is applied in a piston motion, I believe that water would squirt out. I haven't really conducted an experiment so I don't really know if it would work. Hence, I came up with a second plan to improve it. For the time being, I would build a sample to test this second enhancement. The spirit user could detect where the water veins were and intuitively knew where to apply his magic to dig. He did so and water emerged from the hole. From then, Irene San once again casted her magic to surround the hole with stones, constructing a well in about the same time it takes to say R. Indeed she was a top-class mage. With a mage around, there wouldn't be any need for a shovel nor heavy machinery. The town's odd job worker, mages, the prototype model of the spinning wheel that I had devised in the blueprint was reproduced by the nimble fingers of the servants. The method to spin the yarn was uncomfortable from our initial testings, so we had it slightly adjusted, but apart from that, the spinning wheel was completed, by turning the pulley handle. The spool of thread would start revolving producing a clack cla sound, while the cotton would whirl and twist into thread. Seems somewhat fun, for the people who were first introduced to the spinning wheel. It took some lectures and training before they could spin the yard easily and match Tyrene Sand's production capacity. For starters, the spinning wheel was placed at a village located nearest to us. This was a scheme aimed at encouraging farmers to spin yarn with the additional time they have on their hands. Thanks to the thousand tooth thresher, the yarn made could be sold for extra cash, albeit it being a small amount. Upon hearing this, the villagers' morale ran higher than usual. A fraction of the harvested crops would be collected as tax, as for the rest of the crops. It could be for self-consumption, could be sold or exchanged for other crops or other items. It appears that most farmers would use up all their harvest in this manner. They do not face much hardship in their lives, but they are hardly able to maintain any savings at all. Under the aristocrats' domains, work for them is easy, however, the tax is rather high. Back at Garagari village, there was hardly any taxation. I believe what they call pioneering rural settlements were simply villages that have been abandoned. It was an experimental area to see if the fields could be cultivated without the help of the mages. When tax collectors came, they didn't really seem to be expecting any tax from us then. Many different things were introduced all at one go but in the end, the demerits of the new installations appeared. Firstly, regarding the wells, a pump model would be effective so we proceeded with the installation of wells with pumps all over the rainforest domain. Nevertheless, words of opposition like this, scooping water from the stone water reservoir is faster and we are very used to this system too would be heard every now and then. Noisy, shut up, is what I really felt like saying but I endured it. And at the information session, I persuaded them by saying water from wells are more hygienic, the water temperature would be more constant, and furthermore, using the handle to draw water is fun. I did so while giggling like a five-year-old, portraying the fun I had while drawing water. As for the spinning wheel, I knew that no matter what, using magic to manufacture yarn compared to using the spinning wheel, could increase the absolute quantity of yarn produced. In other words, using the same amount of cotton, magic can mysteriously produce more yarn compared to physically producing it with the spinning wheel. Speaking of which, back at the Garagari village, the mages were able to use three strands of straw to make the fish trap when three strands shouldn't have been enough. It seems that magic has the ability to augment the amount of material. What is the mechanism behind it? No, does it even have a mechanism or it is just magic? Magic doesn't need a logic behind it. I can't understand anything anymore. Nevertheless, 
The quantity produced in a day through the division of labor between villagers far outstrips that of magic, so we can afford to overlook it. It was decided that we proceed with manufacturing yarn using the spinning wheel. The production of yarn was progressing smoothly. On the contrary, we ran into a new problem of exhausting the supply of cotton and already used the last harvest of cotton. There were times when I had to do work related to the well and the spinning wheel, and had to leave the residence temporarily but I still serve mainly as the young master's maid. Occasionally, while I'm at work in the residence, a certain female with a super angry expression would come storming in while yelling. She is a mage, as another fellow mage of the rainforest family domain. Her main duty was to use dyed yarn made by the dying master and turning it into cloth. In short, she is a weaving mage. From my conversations with Claude San, the production of yarn recently has become too fast and she can't keep up with the weaving. Her workplace was teeming with yarn, so much so that all that she sees and breathes is just yarn. Key I, this was the complaint she brought up. I see, I see, she must be on the brink of depression. No, however, she should be all right if she can still squeal Key I energetically. While you are still yourself, it should be possible to finish it. For our dear company, we would work hard. I, who has completely embraced the ways of the black business, was going to admonish her like that but Claude San, who was beside me, launched a preemptive attack by replying, I got it, now then, what shall we have you build for us then? Hey, what about my opinions of it? No way, Key I, as my final act of desperation, I tried asking, this job is just about producing cloth products, how about the other mages, are they doing well in their work? But they were all right, so I had to reluctantly accept the task of drawing up a blueprint for a weaving loom. The entire process of producing cloth products is something like this, farming, seed planting, humans, greater than forced growth of crops, mages, greater than crop harvesting, humans, greater than yarn making, was mages previously, greater than dyeing, humans, greater than weaving, mages, greater than sewing, humans, some parts mages, greater than shipping and selling, humans. The part on forced growth of crops, mages, is something that I cannot change, so I treated it as though I didn't see it, and if I can clear the weaving part, most of the later portions can be completed by humans. Come on, even weaving was delegated to mages, what is the meaning of this? R. However, even in olden Japan, there existed a princess called Oraheim Sama and she was the goddess that weaved. I see, I see. Then there is no helping it. I know, I know, some way or another, even though this was an appropriate daydream to console myself, I was still left in a sulking mood after finishing the blueprint. The stance of a person stretching out the warp and connecting the weft in a zigzag way, using a skew-like object to help squeeze in the thread. This was what could be seen from an illustration of a weaving loom left behind by history. I used the first prototype to weave and the completed cloth was not bad. Still, the speed of making it was slow. The mages could do it fast. By chanting their incantations, the thread would dance on their own and weave themselves into cloth. However, do not forget that we humans possess a skill very typical of ourselves, human wave tactics. Doing so. We shouldn't lose out in speed. We installed a large amount of weaving loom and recruited workers for this the weaving. Some people from the yarn spinning group came over. Basically, urgent jobs would be done by mages whereas the rest would be made manually with weaving looms. It is likely that with more and more experience with the weaving loom, the people's speed of production should increase too. My prediction is that burden on mages would gradually decrease. After this, every once in a while, an exhausted spirit user guy would come with an expectation like, help, Doriman, and plead for any tool to make his job easier. I am not a convenience stall, no by can. The only thing I knew about the job scope of a spirit user is that they force growth of crops in the face of their cheat-like abilities. There was nothing much I could do to make a difference, was what I told him. Despite that, the persistent spirit user wanted to discuss further so I decided to listen and found out that recently, the number of spirits in the fields have decreased. I can't see spirits so I have no idea what they are. Yet, for the time being I told him about fertilizers, 
I recommended that he burn the non-cotton component of raw cotton and scatter the ashes in the fields. Still, I couldn't wipe off the thought that at any rate, as long as magic was used, this would all be meaningless. Magic is really imbalanced. As for now, with the introduction of the spinning wheel, the villagers around here would be able to use their free time to spin yarn and weave. Also, in order to reduce the constant waste of time waiting for mages to come by the farmer's fields, the time needed to wait for a spirit user to help grow the crops would be shortened. Next, once I managed to complete all the troublesome work, I organized a family dinner for Irene San, whom I requested, and her sons that proceeded without a hitch. For their first dinner together, Alan, Kane Bout Charmer and even Irene San were frozen with tension and could only make forceful attempts at laughing. Claude San later joined in to have his meal, however, only Claude San was eating without any awkwardness, causing him to stand out. That too was interesting. Nevertheless, after repeating the same dinner every day, they became used to it and nowadays, they had their meals quietly as a happy family. I was extremely happy at this outcome but, honestly, my jealousy of their happy family was in no way insignificant. Just a little bit. Alan's anger management issues have decreased and regarding who helps him in his change of clothes and bathing, even if it wasn't me and was another male servant, he wouldn't yell at them. It seems that Kane Bouchama has persuaded Alan that it would be better for a male servant to assist him in his change of clothes and bathing. Indeed, it looks like Kane Bouchama has become bothered by receiving help from female servants for such kind of activities. When I had first met Kane Bouchama, he was around eight years old but right now, his was already nine. He is slowly approaching adulthood. I'm now six years old too. From around this period, a rumor that there was a sketchy man searching for me started to spread. May Dark 15 Irene San's secret plan and the story from now on. I was called by Claude San to come down to the guest room. At the room, both Claude San and Irene San were intensely awaiting my arrival. They were staring daggers at one another. I am dearly sorry. It appears that I have been somewhat late. Right? I was told to come after finishing dinner so I stuffed dinner down my stomach as fast as I could and race walked my way to the room and still, I was late, the aura that loomed around the room was petrifying. Nope, you were early, you please sit here. Uphill now, Claude San had been making a slightly angry expression but upon seeing me, the gentleness in his face returned and he prompted me to take the seat beside him. I was charmed by his kind offer and sat right next to him. Mew, I have asked this of you many times over but, do you really not have any clue about the man who has been searching for you? Ah, this issue again. Recently, there has talk about this mysterious man who has been prying into my background and had gone around the neighborhood to seek out information on me. Moreover, for some reason, this enigmatic man covers his head with a jute bag to hide his identity and no matter how much others asked for his name, he wouldn't give a reply and when we tried to capture him, he managed to escape without a trace. Yes, I do not think this person is an acquaintance of mine. I do not have any knowledge about a person who hides his identity like that. In response to my reply, Claude San said, I see and started mumbling to himself while casting his sight downwards, as I have feared, it could be an aristocrat from another domain or a person from the royalty. Either possibilities means that someone has set their sights on you. He grumbled without a hint of emotion. Don't say that with a blank face. That's so ominous. The mysterious man that was looking for me knew that I was the one who played an integral part in developing the new tools. The theory that this man, who has been snooping around for my information, is a spy from another domain seems the most plausible among others. Well, Anisama. I can understand the possibility of the spy being sent by another aristocrat but there is no way the royalty would go so low as to secretly send a spy? No, there are things that Irene don't know. The royalty is terrifying. Under the worst circumstances, you could just vanish. Hold up, saying that I would just disappear. Am I really in such a dangerous position? I don't recall coming up with a tool that merits such treatment. This is too disturbing. No way, Anisama is exaggerating things. There's no way such things can happen right? However, there is a possibility that the other aristocrats have taken notice of the tools that we have put up on market. 
they must have dispatched people to investigate on it. The fact that Ryu was the one who initiated the development of these tools should have been concealed. Still, in either case, as Claude San said so, he placed his arm over my shoulders, triggering Irene San to stare penetratingly at him. Ryu is my property. I have no intention of handing her over to anyone. Claude San was giving an unusually serious look at Irene San for some reason. The aura of the room that was momentarily peaceful ever since I came in became tense again. No, you is mine. Didn't you say the other time that you bought her for me? Irene San was putting up a fight against the stern-looking Claude San. Somehow, the both of them have been fighting over for this merchandise. Me. Good grief. I wish I wasn't left out from this discussion. Annual income. Welfare. Job scope. Location of workplace and workplace environment. Please examine all this before coming to a conclusion. Such were the rights that I do not possess. 8. Irene San and Claude San, which one shall I pick? Or more like, will my job scope change? Whichever way I choose would be the same won't it? No, I'm not selling her. You will stay by my side. I had purchased her originally for one gold coin you know. Claude San jacked up the price in a nonchalant manner. Wasn't it just three silver coins? This person is really shrewd. If that's the case, I'm willing to fork out two gold coins. No way I'm selling her. She will be my maid. How about platinum coins? Platinum coins? N no. It's still a no. No matter how much you offer, I won't sell her. Claude San wavered for a second there. Why, Anisama? Didn't you promise me from the start that if I'd take a liking to her, you would sell her to me? That was the case but I have also taken a liking to her beyond my imaginations. So I decided to have her as my maid. Hence, when Cardendono returns, I would be taking you to my company. Eh? What did you just say? Carden Samu is, if I am correct, Irina Kusama's husband? Is he returning back? I couldn't help but interrupt the auction. Yes, that's right, Ryu. Unfortunately, Otisama has to stay in the capital but he managed to reach a point where he can take a break and would be coming back, said Irene San in elation. This means Kane Bouchama and Alan's further is coming back. Hey, this is a good thing. However, if I remember correctly, the reason for Claude San staying at this residence is because the head of the household was absent. I see, that's why he is going back to his company, from their conversation. Claude San's company is headquartered not too far away but even then, movement still requires the use of coaches, and that going back cannot be done on the spur of the moment. If I became Claude San's maid, I would have to be separated from this place. I have gotten along well with everyone here and gotten used to my work. If it was possible, I really, really, don't want a change in workplace. Staying behind and working under Irene San seems to be the better option. All right, let's support Irene San. Go for it, Irene San. Irene, why are you so eager to have her by your side? Even Alan has become more tamed as of late, and that there shouldn't be any work that specifically requires the help of you. Furthermore, there is this dodgy person investigating on you too, and it would be much safer for her to be at my company. That may be true but I, truthfully, need Ryu's help, said Irene San as she fidgeted restlessly. A. What could it be? Apart from the things I have been today already, is there anything else? Dot could be this be a new startup? There is always a lack of personnel in black startup companies. What is it? If that's the case, can't we have her complete it before joining me at the company? However, this is something she cannot do now. This is a request that can be done only after a few years have passed. A few years later? Specifically, what do you want? Immediately, Irene San turned to meet my eyes. It feels as though she wanted to say something and that after being slightly troubled by it, she said it out straight. I want her to conduct sex education for my sons. Eh? What did you just say? You said sex ed. Dot, is that the so-called thing? Or do you mean something like health and physical education? No, I could have misheard it. There's no way it's that. However, the Claude San beside me began to panic. From his flustered expression, I felt that it was more likely to be sex ed, real, intercourse. W what are you saying, Irene? That is something for the older and more experienced to handle isn't it? Exactly. Totally. Claude San. That kind of thing should, indeed, 
would be best guided by a veteran. But, back in my time, my partner was Gouda Ojis. Compared to boys, girls' sex education doesn't go all the way but, when I was first shown it, the thing I felt was Gouda Ojisans. I still have nightmares on it now. That's why I won't allow the same thing to happen to my sons. Alan and Kane Bouchama both fancy you too, so isn't that a good arrangement? WWWW What are you saying, Irene? That's no good. Firstly, Mew is far too young. She obviously doesn't have any experience. Such a partner wouldn't be appropriate. We need to get someone who is experienced. That's right. You said it right. Claude San, I was inexperienced even during my previous lifetime. I'm still very pure. I was initially hoping to join Irene's faction in my job search, and now, in a complete reversal, I pinned my hopes on Claude San instead. If we did it that way, it would be the same as Anasama. Mary would have to do it, won't she? A eh, Mary? The lady that was washing the clothes. She had a kind nature and had a good physique. But just a bit older Mary San R, that's what it is, Claude San's first and the most important experience was taken care of by, I see, dot R, whoops, I was kinda picturing it, there's nothing particularly bad about Mary, no good, even you are still single at this age Anisama, because your first with a female was with Mary who was past her prime, as of such, I'm sure she wasn't very good at it, and that you've lost interest in girls. Having a young partner, especially one that is on close terms, would definitely be a better choice. There won't be any bad memories. Wah, there's no way that I have no interest in females. Moreover, Mary wasn't that particularly bad. She was extremely g gentle to me. Claude Sand started to blush. Please, I beg you, stop describing your memories of that. I would subconsciously play back how gentle Mary San was in the back of my mind. So please, stop. A maid's coaching on cleaning the first hole I scrubbed. R, oh no. I even came up with the title. My brain, reboot. Even after erasing my mind of these extraneous thoughts, I couldn't shake off the image of an immature lady. Ah, it's not working. I couldn't reboot my brain at all. Eh, furthermore, don't we have many young and beautiful maids? For example, wouldn't Stella be great? Ugh, stop. Claude San. Stella San or anyone else. Please don't add new characters. No way. She is a clean freak. In addition, other than you or Mary, there are no other maids that are not of an aristocrat's lineage or kin. I can't make such a request to them. Looking at how Irene San spoke about it while scowling, Claude San's shoulders drooped and he sighed. Eh, don't give up Claude San. Keep at it. I was thinking about this when the day's second firm expression was made. Irene San winced for a brief moment. That being so, we need to hurry up and bring a professional from the town. No matter what is done, you would stay with me so that proposal is a no-go. You wouldn't be bothered by that right? Yes, I'll be in your care. I shook off all the wild delusions in my head and gave a reply to Claude San that was much better than when I first came to the residence. Irene San pouted. The way her cheeks puffed up was cute. Anyways, she appeared to have given up. That was close. Although I was just six years old, my chastity had been threatened. Good job, Claude San. And after that, I, Claude San and Irene San who was sulking, continued on discussing about plans for my future. End of block one.